Introducing Coco Golf Signature Shoe. More than just a tennis shoe, it's a fusion of 90s inspired style and cutting edge performance technology. With its sleek mid cut silhouette, it's designed to enhance speed and power on the court. The multi piece upper construction delivers high energy return for players of all levels. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, the Coco CG1 empowers you to dominate the game. Learn more and purchase the Coco CG1 at NewBalance.com. Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in, where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win. You don't pay. Phillips Law Firm. Justice for you. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and nada yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the men's room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Dixville. Dixville. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. <laughs> Out of the way we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4,055. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, the Ted Smith, and Mike Hawk. Montgomery! And you are in the men's room. On tap today, once again, we play Big Dummy. Ted's meat and potatoes head south of the border. We will play Profile This. Plus headlines, the men's room shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Clack, clack. Drink it down. All right, here we go. Pennsylvania man laughs and celebrates after getting his 12th DUI. Meanwhile, Seattle police nab a man who stole $40,000 in magic cards, but they will not name the guy. Protecting him. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Massachusetts man busted with crack and a rocket launcher in his car. German shepherds jump into a stranger's truck and refuse to move from where they are. A light rail conductor is attacked with a foreign substance. Hmm. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, today is the day that we play Big Dummy. The game show that rewards you for your stunning ignorance. And here's how it works. You call us, we will spin the category wheel. Oh, yeah. Almost. 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 We'll, we'll spin the category wheel. Almost there. Almost. And then we'll ask you a question from that category. But here's where Big Dummy separates itself from your average, more reputable game show. We will continue to ask you questions until you get one right. Because as always, we want you to leave here smarter than you showed up. Now, so far this year, our biggest dummy has been the lovely and talented Dunneen, who thought Roe versus Wade was a debate about how to spend time in the water and found a way to answer 12 consecutive questions wrong. Can you do better? Well, of course you can. Everyone else has. So give us a call, and off we go on Big Dummy. To make a test and play Big Dummy, call 206-803-ROCK. 
You can like The Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send your emails to Room at KISW.com. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Introducing the Two Way V4, where groundbreaking fuel cell technology meets fresh foam cushioning for the ultimate performance. With Fuel Cell, each step feels explosive, delivering unparalleled energy return. Paired with fresh foam, experience maximum comfort throughout the game. Its lightweight textile upper offers support and breathability without sacrificing agility. Whether you're hitting the clutch shot or locking down the opposition, the Two Way V4 gives you the tools to play at a high level. Learn more and purchase the Two Way for yourself at NewBalance.com. Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in, where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win, you don't pay. Phillips Law Firm justice for you this spring break away and visit fort collins colorado seeking a culinary escape local restaurants offer exclusive specials during great plates of downtown fort collins love live music foco mx is a two-day festival with hundreds of colorado artists eager to be entertained the lincoln center hosts comedian mike berbiglia and an evening with john kuzak plan your travels at visitfortcollins.com Fort Collins, where adventure casual is a way of life. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Home of Charles, away we go. Welcome to season 19, episode number 4055. What a large and a charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. The head chef is back. Ted's meat and potatoes. Get a little uh, Mexican food today on the program. We are. We'll talk some margaritas and then, uh, you know, everybody's favorite local spot. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Turns nope. out a lot of Americans have a local spot. Yes. We, uh, right I, here in the state. I've got a local spot. i got uh, two or three of them. The i got one too. around the corner from my place, There's which is okay. There's a few around there I like better, but in a pinch, yeah. you can just run down the street and grab something. Well, it seems like there's authentic, there's there's higher end, there's more Americanized Mexican food. It, it, it kind of is, it, it's divided, I think, into into different. I like Taco Bell. You could say, hey, look, uh, right. that's not, I get a taco every time I go there. I don't get anything crazy. I believe they call that Mexican inspired. I know. Yeah, exactly. So I, there's different levels. It's, it's yeah, Taco to Bell. A taco. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's Taco Bell. I mean, I get two tacos, a Jack in the Box. That's That's not really Mexican food, but it's kind of... Now, at Taco Bell, like I said, the guy that started that, he specifically was trying to make tacos for white people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was, he lived in California. It was a new thing. Burger chains were taken off. So he's like, I'm going to make kind of a mild taco with mild sauce. And it's fantastic. Yeah. We, we talk about the sauce all the time. There's one thing about Taco Bell. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have to be the hottest sauce in the world. It doesn't have to have ghost pepper in it. I know people really geek out on the hot sauces. And if your palate can handle that, good for you if you like the taste of it. Good sure. for you. But some stuff is so hot. Yeah, you, you don't enjoy it. You really just don't enjoy the flavor of the peppers. No. But Taco Bell, I mean, whatever that is, it's just, it just it tastes fine. Mm-hmm. Mild, mild is fine. So we'll get into uh, a little Mexican food coming up with the head chef and Ted's meat and potatoes. What else do we have for you today? Tickets for you to see Pearl Jam at Climate Pledge Arena. Pearl Jam bringing their Dark Matter World Tour to Climate Pledge May 28th and 30th. We have your tickets coming up. What they asked us to do was come up for a uh, with a time, give you the time to text the code word that we'll, we will give you at that time to 206803ROCK. Mm-hmm. So we've determined the time today is going to be right around... 420. Ooh, good pick, man. Wow, 420. I like that. Yes. All and right. uh, we'll give you the code word again. Text that to 206-803-ROCK. Hey! Your chance to win tickets to see Pearl Jam. So we'll uh, do that again today as well. And today is the day we play the game known as Big Dummy. It's an easy game to play. We spin the category wheel. You're either playing for Team Sober or Team Not Sober. So far, our biggest dummy of the year, that has been Dunneen, who took 12 questions to get one right. You big dummy! And as we do when we uh, we play a uh, little big dummy, we'd like to do a men's room poll. Last time, uh, we got news that two people 
just got the first ever scholarships to go to a university to be on the cornhole team. Correct. Which I did not know the cornhole existed in college. I did not know they had a team, much less that they started giving out scholarships. But they were Correct. the first. But, right? I mean, you got a kid and you got cornhole in your backyard. Get his ass out there, man. You might save a few bucks. Trust me, I have cornhole. I have a kid. It's like, all right, look, man. I got to talk to your teachers. Maybe cornhole's the way to go. Could be. So we were inspired by the fact that, look, you can you can get a scholarship uh, to a university and to be on the cornhole team. So we looked at actual scholarships that do exist uh, for a different uh, number of sports. Mm -hmm. And basically said this, look, you're going to get a scholarship. Uh, what do you want to participate in? So the choices, believe it or not, there is a scholarship that you can get to multiple universities to play table tennis. Mm -hmm. Some of these are club sports, right. but either way. You uh, get a scholarship, do you care? Scholarship is a scholarship. I mean, look, if your kid gets a scholarship because they made the road team cool, mm -hmm. it ain't going to make yeah. them money in the future. So play ping pong, it doesn't matter. Right. Uh, Cornhole, obviously on the list, as well as Ultimate Frisbee. We brought up the fact that Aaron Jones was one of the best uh, in the world uh, for his age. Yeah, the dude traveled overseas with the team to compete in the yeah. uh, international competitions. When he was in uh, when he was in high school. And now he travels the world again as a musician. Dude was apparently just born to travel yeah. the world. And finally, believe it or not, he you doesn't can, even like Seattle. No, <laughs> you can get a uh, scholarship to do bass fishing. Yeah. Which, that was my pick because I thought, man, that's cool. Just, you know, you just go fishing. I don't and like anything else, I always feel like fishing is luck. And I know that, look, like we, we talked to a guy who said, yeah, I take my daughter's fishing, but I'm spending so much time uh, getting a fish off their line, rebaiting, untangling, and everything else. I don't have a lot of time to fish on my own. But I don't care, man. I, I really do feel like when you go fishing, it's just the luck of the I, I realize that people have different strategies. I don't know if it's luck, though, because it, right, it matters the time of day you're going. The, whatever what, lure you're using. whatever. Right. I'm saying, like, because I follow a few professional bass fishermen on social media. And, like, those guys don't get skunked. Yeah, they, like know, they, they know out, the they holes. Catch fish. They know the areas. Yeah. They know all those things. I, I, I mean, for true. normal people like me and you, right. yes. 100% okay. luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's how the results uh, shook out from last week. We put the poll up for uh, for you on Twitter. If you follow us on Men's Room Live, and here's how the results came out. Coming in a fourth place, 15% of you said, I'll take the scholarship and ultimate Frisbee. Coming in a very close third place at 17% of the vote, table tennis hmm. was a scholarship. Now is where it gets tight. In second place with 33% of the votes, that would be a scholarship for bass fishing. And number one, cornhole at 34%. Sure. Squeaking out bass fishing by one percentage point. Okay, so uh, this week on our men's room poll, we are inspired by a story about uh, the Guinness World Record holder for the uh, dog that lived the longest in its life. Right. A dog named Bobby has possibly... Bobby. 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 Has posthumously lost his claim to fame. The Guinness World Records has ruled against the Portuguese dog, keeping the title of the oldest canine ever. Oh, that'd be Portuguese, Miles. Yes. Portuguese. Uh, yes. Portuguese. It uh, no longer has the evidence it needs to support Bobby's claim as the record holder. Now, Bobby was a guard dog. He made it supposedly to 31 years and five months. He lived on a farm in rural Portugal with his owner, uh, Lionel Costa. He was proclaimed at the time the world's oldest living dog and the oldest dog ever in February of 2023. However, this was all upended following an investigation and a probe with concerns raised by both veterinarians and other experts, both privately and publicly, and then media investigations. The group had suspended the title pending the review, and they announced last month that he has been stripped of his title. Oh, Bobby. Uh, they said it Damn was too it, early. Bobby. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a liar. But do well, we know this? He's dead now. Here's, here's what they did. It's too early now to speak about a new record holder. It's going to take a long time for microchip uptake around the world to catch up with pet ownership. And that is now how they are officially okay. judging the age of the dog. Until that time, we will require documentary evidence for all years of a pet's life. Now, the record holder, prior to Bobby, uh, definitely didn't have a microchip. Uh, Bluey was an Australian Bluey. cattle dog. He died in 1939. Oh, Jesus, come on. He reportedly lived to be was 29 years. Was he the inspiration years. behind Bluey? Could be. I'm wondering. I mean, uh, if he held the record up until Bobby, which was what, only in the last few months? Uh, probably, man. So, uh, guess what? Uh, Bluey is now back again, holding his title as the world's oldest dog. Yeah. So, he got that. Bluey's bad business. That's right. So, Bluey's massive. Mm -hmm. In, uh, 
In honor of uh, the Guinness Book of World Records, we decided that we would take a look at some other Guinness World Records. Mm -hmm. And you would, in fact, be the record holder for each of these. So that's our men's room poll. Okay. So your Guinness record, your first choice would be to have, in the world, the biggest nose. Now that record goes to a man named Mehmet Ozurik. He was a Turkish Guinness World Record holder. Has been confirmed as having the world's largest recorded nose. Now, is this like distant from the tip of your nose to your cheeks? Is it a bridge like down Jay to the bottom? To the bridge down the whole to the bottom. Thing. Okay. This guy basically had a four-inch nose. So four, God, four, damn. four inches. Okay, worth of nose. Either it started on his forehead or ended on his chin. I mean, that's ridiculous. So from the bridge down, about four inches. Talk about old toucan Sam. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so okay, it was measured. On the 18th of March, Damn. 2010. Look at that picture. Yeah, Holy. That, that guy's got to go on. All right. All right. Now, they remeasured it again in 2020 and 21 before he passed away because the myth is your ears and your nose yeah. never stop growing. Correct. They basically disproved this myth. Oh. Uh, as far as a person's nose and ears continuing to grow with age, it seems that way from a visual standpoint. I will say that, but apparently that's not true. Now... For most of his life, he was bullied by his friends for his nose, especially when he was younger. But later in life, <laughs> say what? He came to the belief it was a blessing from God. He also claimed to have a better sense of smell than the average person and was able to inflate a balloon with his nose. Yes, because that's God's will. He died of a heart I attack. I want you to blow yeah. balloons with your nose. At the age of 73. You're welcome. In 2023. But he lived to be 73 years old. And still, still no one's broken his record. So he is the world record holder, Guinness-wise, for the man with the largest nose. Uh, by the way, Ted, someone just said uh, Bluey the cartoon is actually named because that family are blue healer dogs. Yeah. So it's like naming a Scottish Terrier Scotty. All right. Now we know. Makes sense. Okay. Mine was Tigger. All right. I don't so, wonder why. You could have a Guinness World Record jump. for the world's biggest nose. <laughs> Next up on the list, you can have the Guinness World Record for the world's biggest ears. All right. And that goes to a man in Hawaii. And he set the world record for having the biggest stretched earlobes. So they don't actually count So the just ears. when you pull them out? That is correct. All right. uh, his lobes are over four inches in oh. diameter. He is a tattoo artist, and he works at uh, Sin City Body Modification and Tattoo Shop in uh, Hilo, Hawaii. So he's got the Guinness World Record for the largest non-surgically made stretch earlobes. Uh, he does have, by the way, just so you're wondering if you want to meet this guy, silicone horns implanted into his head, which are uh, Jesus, matched by damn. flesh tunnels in his nostrils, lower lip, and bolt holes on his forehead with spikes screwed bolt in. Bolt holes, yes. In addition to tattooed eyebrows and tattooed eyeballs. Mm hmm So this guy goes all in and tattoo world. It might as sure. well for years are that big. So you could have the uh, Guinness record for the world's biggest nose or biggest ears. Now your next choice, you could have the biggest lips, the biggest mouth. That's the uh, Guinness record. And that belongs to a woman who is 31 years old yeah. named Samantha Ramsdell. And if you've ever scrolled through TikTok, they say, and you encounter a woman with uh, style, a sense of humor, and an incredibly large mouth. <laughs> Damn. You both uh, you most likely have yeah. stumbled upon the record holder. She is a 31-year-old uh, Connecticut resident, uh, every dentist dream, with a larger-than-life mouth that stretches at a massive 6.52 centimeters. She's been confirmed for having the world's largest mouth gape. <laughs> oh, my God. She can put a whole apple yes. in her mouth. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, when she went viral, they said, okay, maybe you do have the world's largest mouth, but you have to get it professionally measured and everything right. else. And you got to check in with Carly Simon first. So, <laughs> she went to her local dentist office in Connecticut with an official um, educator, I don't know, uh, presented uh, there to measure her gape for the Guinness World <laughs> Record title. On my face! And her gate blew the pass went out of the water. So she had a way bigger mouth. It was not even a, it wasn't even a competition. So, biggest nose, biggest ears, biggest lips. Next up is the Guinness World Record for the world's longest hair. Mm -hmm. Now, this one belongs to a woman in India with link, uh, lengthy locks measuring seven feet. Jesus. Nine inches. The woman claims the world record for the longest hair of a living person. Smita is 46. 
And the hair is growing out of a mole on her <laughs> neck. She has been growing her hair since she was 14 years old. And she was inspired by her mother, whose genes she credits with the healthy growth uh, of her hair. Now, Smita usually washes her hair twice per week. All right. Twice per week. The entire process, okay, Jesus. including washing, drying, detangling, and styling, takes up to three to four hours. Yeah, I just that, looked at a picture of it. There's no way it takes less than that. That each time that she washes her hair, again, four hours that you have to take the time to take care of this mess. She spends 30 to 45 minutes washing it alone. So 45 minutes just washing the hair. Then she dries it with a towel before using her hands to then detangle all seven feet, nine inches. That typically takes two hours Jesus. to untangle the hair. I lay a sheet down on which I detangle my hair while standing, standing on my bed. Now, once her hair is detangled and fully dried, she combs it before then braiding it or tying it into a bun. Good so Lord. So you can obviously see that if you pick that That's one. That's too much, man. There's, uh, there's some maintenance work involved. <laughs> a little bit. Okay. So I think, just based on what I've already gone through in life, I'm going to take the Guinness record for the biggest nose. I would take the biggest nose only because I'm a guy that likes to do armpit farts and all that kind of stupid thing. So if I can blow up a balloon with my nose, that's my trade-off. I think I want lips. Well, biggest biggest lips. lips? Yeah. Okay, I don't think that would be the worst in the world. you got to remember, when her mouth is normally closed, yes, it does look like she has a rather large mouth. Yes, she does. But until she opens that thing, it's like a great white shark, right? right. You know, they're swimming around. You know, Okay, it's got a mouth, and it opens the mouth. You go, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the size of that mouth. So it's... Yeah, that, that's not a bad one from an aesthetic But is it standpoint. her mouth or her lips? Because someone here does make the point. So her lips really aren't that big. It's just her mouth is super wide. She has a lot of lip to cover the perimeter of her mouth, but right. they're not, like, pronounced. Yeah. But anytime someone has something going on with her face, it is immediately something that you are drawn to as far as looking at it. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, for whatever reason, that just seems to be the one area where if something is going on, you have a hard time not staring. Because you can't hide it. Right. If you have a third nipple, we're, we're not going to know unless you tell us <laughs> listen, for sure. But listen. your face is your face. I knew uh, we. I, I knew a, a guy that uh, used to date someone that I worked with. And I believe they went on and got married and everything else. All right. But uh, for the most part, good guy. Uh, we talk a lot. And he had a blackhead in the middle of his forehead that looked like a mountain. I mean, it that was, was not a blackhead. It, I, I don't that know. was not a I don't head. know what it was. I don't know what it was either, oh, yeah, but I know what head. it was not. That wasn't a pimple. What do you think was, that was? It was like a mole or something. No, well, a no, mole? Because no. it seemed like it, was like it, it looked like it was coming from under the skin and pushing out, right? Yeah. Like if you were growing a horn, not that I believe that's what it was, but like it was something under the skin, but it it never seemed to... Or just a cyst. Well, I I've guess. seen the same thing on Dr. Pimple Popper. That's why I know this thing, because it looked identical, and she went in after it. And when she blew that thing out, man, I was like, Can you talk about the same person? We got it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that thing is. Yeah, like, I mean, but he's the one you, person you I could, know. You could not stop staring at it. Yeah. It's like the guys with their eyes real far apart. Or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is, like huge ass nose or a bump or whatever the deal is, or a zit in the middle of their forehead. I mean, either way. So, our men's room poll, your Guinness record. Is it the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? We'll take a break and come back with Big Dummy next. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places. Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. If you don't take yada yada in life, don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and nada yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. One, two, three, four. Those are numbers. But you already knew that. If you want to know what number you're going to pay each month for your car, use Kelly Blue Book My Wallet on AutoTrader. They're really good at numbers. <laughs> AutoTrader. 
At UW Medicine, we invented the first auto-adjusting prosthetic socket. We discovered a protein interaction that's linked to dementia. We're using AI to develop new vaccines. Our never-ending quest for discovery means better care in our hospitals and clinics. UW Medicine is the only health system in Washington where a top-rated medical school and a research powerhouse are directly connected to improve your health. UW Medicine, a higher degree of health care. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. And away we go. The game is Big Dummy 206803 Rock. Steve, who is our first contestant, ready to play the big game. Hello, Marshall. Welcome to the Men's Room. Hey, how you feeling doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Marshall, you on Team Sober or Team Not Sober? Oh, I told you I was today. All right, Marshall. Okay. Our men's room poll. You're going to hold the Guinness record. Will it be for the biggest nose, ears, lips, or the longest hair? Uh, we'll go with ears. 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 All right, Marshall with the big-ass ears. Yeah. All right, Marshall with your big-ass ears. Listen up. Here is your question. What is the name of the test to determine whether a computer could convincingly imitate a human? Oh, I, 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 I don't know. The final test, I have no idea. The Turing test. Mm, the Turing hmm. test. All right. Do you think it's uh, weird that your computer will ask you if uh, you're a robot? Yeah, when you go to uh, do something like, are you a robot? Like, no, you are. Right, exactly. Right, just, just making sure. I'm, no. I'm asking the questions here. Exactly. And then what's weird is, like, apparently robots are not that sophisticated because you just click... No. It's like, cool. It's like when I was 15. You know what I mean? Are you 18 years of age? Sure. And then all the porn I wanted, right? Uh, I have cosmic I mean, knowledge, I, but I can't click the okay button. <laughs> I know all Damn. Them. I cannot differentiate between yes or no. <laughs> what letter is that? <laughs> robot asking me if I'm a robot. <laughs> all right, your question. Is that a streetlight? <laughs> Who was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer's father? He had a father? Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> of course he did, yeah. ma'am. His you father know, went to find him. Marshall, listen, man. When two reindeers love each other. <laughs> oh, he's the Jesus of the yeah, reindeer yeah. world. <laughs> yeah, immaculate conception. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, let's go with Blitzen. Nah, Don- man. Blitzen was a drunk. Donner was, in fact, his dad. Hmm. I also feel like now something bad happened. What do you mean? What do you mean something bad happened? Well, oh, Rudolph grew up without a father, apparently. Oh. In Marshall's world, yeah. yeah. Maybe you pronounce it donor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, I, I, never yeah. That, I never heard that in my life. Did, my did, you, did you ever watch the, the kids special Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? That's about like five or six. Okay, it's been a hot minute. Well, the, the main reindeer that went out to look for his son Rudolph was Donner. And going back, Donner was kind of a D. Oh, yeah. He really was. Completely was. Yeah, he was not a a good Right, he's like, you little freak of a son. Cover up your nose. I don't want people seeing that. Yeah. Embarrassing me. (laughs) All right, your question. Be like the other normal boys. (laughs) You dumbass red nose. Get it from your mother. All right, your question. (laughs) She's a whore. (laughs) What nationality? (laughs) Yes, that's an actual conversation that Donner had with Rudolph. Your mom's a whore, boy. All right. (laughs) What nationality does Teddy claim to be in the movie Stand By Me? Oh, that's Teddy. Stand By Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, German? I'll say Irish. French. 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 I don't think I've ever seen It's all right. It was cold at the time, huh? It's one of those where I, I should see it because I'm a Stephen King guy, but I still haven't seen it. I haven't even read the story. It is Stephen King, but it's not the Stephen King that you grew to like Stephen King right. for, if you know what I mean. The buddy. All right, your question. Which star is represented by placing a star on top of a Christmas tree? Oh, God, you got to ask the hard question. I have. The North Star? Yeah. Star of Nazareth? Star of Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem. 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 Yeah. He was from Nazareth. Correct. Aha. Then he moved to Pennsylvania, hence the star of Bethlehem. <laughs> Love wow. hurts. What? Nazareth, it's Bethlehem, yes. Pennsylvania. Oh, there really? Yeah. There really is, dude. Bethlehem it, Steel. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, it didn't. <laughs> was it from Bethlehem in the Middle East? <laughs> Look, it's only funny because you didn't live there. 
I've never but, actually heard of Bethlehem Steel. So, oh really? really? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was a major steel producer. It came out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which <laughs> right. is very not biblical. Is probably the nicest way to put that. How but, confused were Pennsylvania kids growing up then? Well, Star Bethlehem you and all bet. that. Well, sure, if you live there, you know, <laughs> just drive to Intercourse. Yes. All right. Well, question. I mean, they live there, so I think they get it. <laughs> Who was the first NFL head coach to win three Super Bowls? Uh, it's either Sula or not. I'm trying to say. Sula won those two. What's up, Noel? Yes, hey, yeah. Chuck Noll, the Chuck Pittsburgh Noll. Steelers. Yeah, That's man. right. It was either going to be Chuck Noll or Tom Landry. Because they were the first, what, Steelers were the first to get four Super Bowl victories, I believe. Correct. And all of those were under Chuck Noll. But yeah, and Landry only won two. All right. Yeah, he won two, lost three. Then Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switcher picked up. And then they haven't been back since, Dad. But you know what? Next year is their year. It is wild to think about how much we talk about, the, people talk about the Cowboys. Like, they haven't been relevant in 30-some years. When's the last time they went to the Super Bowl? Was it 95, I think? I think 95 or 96, I believe, was the last time they were in. And every year since then has been their year. Right. Hello, Alex. Welcome to the men's room. Boo, bitches. Boo! Boo. Alex, are you sober or not sober? I am sober. Alex, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, you're going to be a Guinness World Record holder. Will it be for the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? I'm going to go with the biggest nose simply for the fact that I can dress as a as an over-exaggerated Maxwell Klinger. All right. Okay. I'm glad you actually put some thought into this. Maxwell Wasted Klinger? Thought from MASH. Oh. Oh, yeah. The dude that uh, wore a dress. Yeah. Klinger. Yeah. I didn't realize Jamie, his Jamie first Farr? name was... Yeah, Jamie Farr. I did not realize his first name was Maxwell. Uh, by the way, someone just wanted to let us know. The point of your computer asking you if you're a robot is not to check whether you answer yes or no. It's actually monitoring your mouse cursor movements and click speed to determine if it mimics human behavior. Oh, wouldn't know that beforehand? Yeah. It just, it just cuts down on spam. Does it? I mean, we have, if you send an email to, like, say, thepodcast.com, <laughs> just go to thepodcast.com. The link's right there. Uh -huh. Like, it'll make sure you're not a robot. Hmm. It's going to ask me if I'm a robot. Yeah. Damn. Come we on, Ted. We were getting a lot of spam from oh, really? Southeast Asia. wonder why that is. <laughs> all right. Here is your question, Alex. In what state are two-thirds <laughs> of all Fortune 500 companies headquartered? Uh, I'm going to guess the one I live in, California. That's actually not a bad guess, but I the difference is Texas. California has high taxes. Let that play into this. So what state are two-thirds of all Fortune 500 companies headquartered? Is it Delaware or Texas? It is Delaware. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't think they I choose to live there. That is where you put your headquarters, you know? Kind of so, like having your Cayman bank account. I don't live in the Cayman Islands, but I have money I don't want you to touch. Subtle way to bring up that he's from California, by the way. I don't know. If you're from California, you just somehow... You have to let us know you're from California. It's well done. Well done. <laughs> All right. Ex I don't enjoy living here. I just do. Where, where in California do you live? <laughs> uh, the Bay Area. The Bay Area. So what is it? Is it the cost of living there or what? 49ers uh, sadness? Um, I'm pretty much on the list five random things uh, on a piece of paper, and you, that's pretty much it. Where Are you like in the North Bay? South Bay. All right. I have no idea then. <laughs> All I know is that you I, mean, I had a buddy that lived in San Rafael. Somebody was like, I know some stuff. All I know is I looked up today. You can buy a ticket to the San Jose Sharks for 15 bucks. That might be the well, yeah, cheapest thing you can buy. 15 <laughs> bucks. 15 <laughs> bucks, man. I mean, you couldn't even get into a Thunderbirds game for 15 bucks. Alex, you couldn't buy a beer at Climate Pledge here in Seattle with 15 bucks. No. Nope. It is cheaper I, to go I, I, see I've the same. I've only been to Climate Pledge one time, and that was for a Bruce Springsteen concert. I'm sorry, but it was. A, but, but I enjoyed the place. Okay, oh, look, don't the, get me wrong. The sound it's is beautiful. great. The it, sound, yeah. It's comfortable, man. It's cool. The it's only awesome. problem that everyone has with it, aside from parking in the middle of a neighborhood, but besides that, it's the cost of booze inside, man. I mean, it is. Yeah. it's staggering. Yeah, don't shoot your mouth off and talk about <laughs> buying around. I did, man. The first time Happened I went, too. there were t there were four of us total, two couples. They got us tickets to Foo Fighters. I didn't even know Foo Fighters are going to play. It's kind of this quiet opening, right? So, man, thanks a lot, guys. I'll tell you what, I'll go grab the first round of beers. Anyway, I get four beers. I walk back. You are now getting your own beer from this point forward. Like, sorry, man. The tickets were probably cheaper when I just dropped them yes. the damn beer. 
In fact, if we wanted to do you a favor, since we're offering Pearl Jam tickets, we should say, look, you buy the Pearl Jam tickets, we will pay for your first round of beer. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't afford that. <laughs> we couldn't swing that. Uh, pro move, uh, if you take the light rail or the monorail mm -hmm. uh, in the armory, there's a couple places where the beers are a little bit cheaper. Okay. Hey, that is a good thing. Not that I ever do that. We're just saying show up drunk. I've also, also heard <laughs> some, some people pregame in the, uh, the, the parking garage across the street. Yes, I may have seen that and smelled that. All right. Here is your question. Excluding Mexico, excluding Mexico, which three Central American capital cities share the name with their country? Hmm. Oh, man. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm just going to have to... Feel just free to just add the word CEO. Nope, that is not one of them. That's not uh, one. All right, can right. we guess? You got one. So Panama for right. sure. Yeah. Panama City, correct. Uh, she's like well, you're done. There's another one where it ends with city. El Salvador City? Nope. But El Salvador's one of them because it's San Salvador. So believe it or not. All right. right, all right. There's one. There's Brazil? one more that ends with city. What else? Hmm. What would be another country in there? Uh, Police? I'll tell you what, Ted. On the East Coast, there are a lot of people from this country. Where we were? Puerto Rico? Nope. Cuba? Venezuela? Guatemala. Oh, um, Jesus. My sister was engaged to Guatemala. Jesus, right. That's right. I yeah. should know that. Yes, yeah, Ted. If he's going to be turning into his he's Guatemala. He's going to his hair on fire. Or his car on fire. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Ricardo. <laughs> Thanks. Tell you what, though. One time on Christmas, he brought over his family, like his great-grandmother's tamales. All right. Which are different than tamales. Just a little bit. They were unbelievable. Right. But, I mean, me and my brother, I don't know. He was kind of a strange dude. But that day... Ricardo was a god at the Smith House. <laughs> that day he was a god. <laughs> they were so good. All right, Alex, I feel like you should know the answer to this based on how our conversation started. Suicide is Painless is the title of what TV show theme song? It, it was actually um, originally the movie, and that would be MASH. Right. Now, I figure once you I said Maxwell me. Klinger, I'm like, I get the feeling he's going to know this one. Gave us Big Dummy 206803 Rock. I'm glad now as an adult I know the name and what that song is. Because I remember even as a kid, it was like, this song's sad. Yes. It's a good song, but yeah, it was just heavy. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, wait, this is a comedy? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Hello, Danny. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Danny, you on Team Sober or Team Not Sober? Sober. All right, Danny. Welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, our men's room poll. You're going to be a Guinness record holder. Is it for the biggest nose, biggest ears, biggest lips, or the longest hair? I'm going to go with the longest hair, but it's going to have to be pubic hair because I'm bald. All right. That'd hey, be fun. Whatever wins. Yeah. Did okay. they have that category? Where does the sock? <laughs> 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 All right. Your question. What island off the coast of California was once known as Pelican Island? Oh, man. Well, I only know of two, and one is Catalina Island, and the other is Alcatraz. Uh, I guess I'll go with Alcatraz. Boom. You got it. One and done. Just so you know, Alcatraz translates to pelican. Mm -hmm. It really does. Ah. Yeah, so we oh. used to call it uh, pelican island. Let's call it Alcatraz. Yeah. Okay. It sounds cooler. All right, language. So with one and done, I believe it's Spanish. I believe okay. Uh, all right, Danny, since you're one and done, we have our 50-50 question for you. And today, we're going with the heights of actors. That's right, the height of actors. So I will put two actors against each other. You tell me who you believe is the taller of the two. You got me? So we're going to yep. start with our old uh, mob actors of all time. We have Dustin Hoffman versus Al Pacino. Which one is taller, Dustin Hoffman or Al Pacino? Ooh, Dustin Hoffman. Al Pacino. Al Pacino is five foot seven. Dustin Hoffman is five foot four. Damn. Damn. I mean, Alcatraz has a chance to be Aztec. What do you think? What? Oh, you mean the Al word? Yes. Why do you think? I mean, maybe. Just based on the Native American population of the area. Sure. It could be. I, I have no idea. I learned that when I went to Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reason I know that, seriously. Okay. I never end up going over. Just do it. Do it one time. I've done All it right. twice now. Once me and the wife did it, I did not want to go. She wanted to go, so we compromised, and I went. Ended up being well worth my time. And then when we went there last, what, August, I think we were there, uh, took the kids over. And like I said, for my son, it was like scared straight. It's like, dude, it, it's not even open anymore. There's no one incarcerated here. But I think the idea of going to prison shook him good. That's not and a bad thing. 
down there. Uh, what's that area called? The wharf. The, the wharf. 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 Yeah. Another Hooters gone. Really? Yep. 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 You're right. Jeez, yep. man. The hell? How do boobs and chicken wings not stay it's in business? It's a West Coast thing, man. I it's guess. a wharf. There's seafood, not wings. That man, that food was so bad. It's also the first in and out I went to. Oh, really? Yeah, it was yeah. right next door. Yep. Hello. <laughs> Hello, oh, I, it is. I like right the next door to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, Bajolas. Hola. Hola. Matt, are you sober or not sober? Not sober. All right, Matt, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, our men's room poll, you're going to be a Guinness World Record holder. Will it be for the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? Let's go with lips. The biggest lips. Yeah, big lip, Matt. Okay, Matt. <laughs> mm. Guy's not up. <laughs> or in. <laughs> All right, Matt, here's your question. So Clark Kent is Superman. Bruce Wayne is Batman. Steve Rogers is Captain America. Who is Frank Castle? Oh, no relation question. to Ryan. I don't even have an educated guess for that. Just name a superhero. Um, but a cool one. Green Lantern. Cooler one. I'll say Flash. I said a cool one. I like Flash. Barry though. Allen. You I, can, I did not say whether or not you can like them, but... Okay, Silver Surfer. Flash that's is. a cool superhero. Is he? He's yes, he is. Nah, he's got cool powers, but he's just not fun to What's listen to. He's an alien. He's not even... And he's just not right. from here. He ah. just kind of... You know, he's so matter-of-fact. You're like, dude, do you have a sense of humor? Oh, it's not the Hulk. That's Bruce Banner. Not the Hulk. Right. He's kind of an I anti-hero. I know this is, too. A lot of people have this guy's logo on the back of their truck, or they'll wear shirts with the logo. Punisher. Punisher. The Punisher. That is correct. That's the nickname for my penis, by the way. All right. <laughs> they put that on the back of people's trucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they do it. Does it leave an imprint on people that you hit it with? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. What's that on your forehead? All right. Don't act like you don't know. Yeah, come on, Mike. All right, your question. In the movie Vacation, where were the Griswolds headed on their cross-country trip? Moose out front should have told you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were going to an amusement park. That is correct. Yes, yes, is. You're right. the name of that amusement park. Uh, I was like, bro, if you don't know, you just don't. Yeah. Wally World. Wally World. Oh, my God. How did I forget that? I don't know. Like, once he didn't say anything, I'm like, right. There's no chance. <laughs> All right. Your question. What is the top <laughs> layer of the earth called? The... Uh, crust there you go just like what's in your underwear the crust does Heck. galactus eat the crust no uh galactus prefers uncrustables uh we just we determined last week the character galactus he eats planets so he would not want to eat the earth or the rocky ones he's he's against crust his mom uh, used to cut the crust off for him any of you geeks in here read about the uh the core being about uh, two-thirds of a different planet that collided with earth yeah. millions of years ago that, that so there's a, a little pla there's a planet. I didn't. There's a planet inside our planet, basically. That is correct. So the oh, core yeah. of our planet is another planet. It's like Inception. It's, That's crazy. Oh, it is like Inception. It's like a little baby. In we there. live on Earth, but really, it's another planet we're standing. I was going to say, I saw a bartender just a couple weeks ago uh, eating the crust off an uncrustable. What, what is there the is crust, no crust on an uncrustable. uncrustable? I mean, there's that little ridge. I just looked at it. I was like, Jesus, you hate crust. <laughs> and he pulled it all through. Took he was eating. the crust off the uncrustable. Correct. My, how much do we need to do for the you, man? The term uncrustable means it is without crust. So she just doesn't like the outside perimeter of things. I, look, I, I can't get it out of my mind. I can't and I, either. And you, every time I got a beer, I brought it up. How do you pull the crust off an uncrustable? More Big Dummy coming up, 206-803-ROCK. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance, too, with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. 
Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Maximize the compensation for your injury claim with Phillips Law Firm. With over 80 years of combined legal experience, they won't allow the insurance companies to dictate what's good enough for you. Whether it's an auto accident or workplace injury, contact Phillips Law Firm today. If they don't win, you don't pay. Ready to check one off the bucket list? Slotzilla is the world's ultimate zip line at Fremont Street Experience in fabulous downtown Las Vegas. Launch 35 miles per hour from the largest slot machine in the world. Zoom over thousands of onlookers and under Viva Vision, the biggest digital display ever. Bask in the glow of the neon marquees of the original strips, iconic casinos. Visit VegasExperience.com for Slotzilla. That's VegasExperience.com. Maximize the compensation for your injury claim with Phillips Law Firm. With over 80 years of combined legal experience, they won't allow the insurance companies to dictate what's good enough for you. Whether it's an auto accident or workplace injury, contact Phillips Law Firm today. If they don't win, you don't pay. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out. Yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from The Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Your chance to uh, win tickets to see Pearl Jam one hour from now. We will give you the secret word coming up at 420. Text that to 206 803 Rock. I think he's going for the perfect record, guys. I know. I can tell. You're already being smug he's about it. it Whatever. One hour yeah, from now. Right. Yeah, yeah. 420. We got to get uh, engineering in here. I, I keep looking to see when you're going to talk, but your light doesn't work. Oh! See? Well, I'll because I look at that from the window. Right? Yeah, you know what Chaz, I mean? like, I come back. Wow, well, that's uh, not happening. Chaz, oh, we had an uh, IT guy that used to work here for uh, for a number of years, and yeah. we used to walk by him every day and on the hallway. And every day I look over to see if he's there, and I, for whatever reason, it, it makes me sad that he's not. I don't. Know. It does. Uh-huh. I'm just like, Chaz, what's up? It's okay. the first person you yeah. saw when you came in. Exactly. Right. Yeah. He's out of Denver. I don't know, but Denver, we're not. Denver. Took my advice. Went to Sam's number three. Oh, oh did it? Boy. Yeah. What do they got there? <clears throat> It's uh, it's kind of a greasy spoon, but it's famous for the breakfast. It was like it was on one of those food shows. I think Guy Fieri went there or something. Yeah, it is awesome, and the portions are massive. Okay, but, yeah. they also have uh, a little side of it. If you go to uh, Sam's Number Three, I think there's a couple of them. That's a good little sports bar, and I mean those bartenders work. Okay, good to know. Hello, Shelly. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola. Hello Shelly, Shelly, are you sober Hola, or not sober? Hola. All of you. Not sober. Not sober, Shelly. All right, yeah. Shelly. What are you drinking there, Shelly? Little margarita time. That's National Margarita Day. Good work. As long as you don't say hairspray, we're okay. okay. All right, Shelly, you're going to be a Guinness World Record holder. Is it for the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? Got to go with the longest hair. All right. How long is your hair right now? Oh, probably to my behind. Oh, oh behind. All right. Shelly. Shelly, Shelly, Shelly. Yeah. I'm good. All oh, right, Shelly. A lot of women cut their hair, you know? They do. They do. Uh, I like it long. Never. Does your hair ever, like, drop in the toilet when you sit down to poop or anything? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, look, I've just never had super long hair. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think there's a length <laughs> where I'm like, that looks that too... <laughs> Where I'm like, that's too long. Over the hair? That's Just for my cool. taste, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, it's all about you. It is. <laughs> it really is. Thank you. If I start dating a woman, I control the hairstyle. Oh. And, the, and, the, and the color. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be a redhead today. 
Mm-hmm. Feel it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Shelly, here's your question. What Where are the bangs I ordered? <laughs> that I ordered. What two months of the year are named after historical figures? Oh, goodness gracious. Historical figures? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to just take a shot in the dark here. I'm going to go with uh, June. You're thinking June Cleaver, sure. Sure. And, um... Maybe June bug. August? August? August, August is August. one Caesar of Caesar Augustus, right? It is Ju- uh, July and August for Julius and Augustus Caesar. Hmm. Now, you could have like taken it. April for right. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Could have taken May for May West. We got June for June Cleaver. And I believe that's why the... January Jones? January Jones. Well done, man. Yeah. The prefixes of September, October, November, and December are all off because, because of July of and Julius. August. Right. So, Sep... Means, means seven, seven. right? Oct means eight. Eight. No, no means nine. nine, right? And Dex Deca, ten, right? Right. Mm. And then these two clowns came along and threw it all off. I will have my own month. That is how rich and powerful I am. Yeah, watch your back, dude. <laughs> Literally, and then he came after Augustus, right? So he was like, "I want my month." To I be think first. that's what it was. I think he came after you Augustus. Like Augustus so. glue. <laughs> Augustus what? <laughs> Augustus glue. glue? He was uh, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Oh, yeah, all right. that's right. Yes, Augustus Gloop. All right, your question. Who played little Gertie in the movie E.T.? <laughs> oh, like Jim Barrymore. All right, nice job, Shelly. Nice job. Oh, so it's her birthday, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, she's what, How 49? old is she nine? 49. No, she's older than that. Happy she's not, dude. She's 49. Really? How old did you think she was? No, 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 uh, she can't be. Why do you say she cannot 49. be 49? Yeah, I just... She was born she, 1975. Okay. Get out of here. That makes her 49. Get out of How here. How old did you think she was? I'm uh, not going to make any more comments. I mean, she doesn't now. look I, I, beaten I, I, up. I, I, doesn't look, and she's been I, around the block, I, 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 but does not have the appearance, I don't think, of someone who's been around the block. Okay. Uh, I just thought she looked older than we did. I'm, 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 really? I'm trying to be polite. Really? You did too, Mike? I did. How yeah. old did you think she was? I thought she was 50s. If you said, I'm five years older than her, I'd be like, get that. Right. Out really? Of here. Right. Yeah. I mean, I look like crap, but I. Uh, <laughs> man, we, we should let her know. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, yeah. You look terrible for your age. I don't know. I just thought she looked older. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she looks like a Birkenstock. No, she's oh. not ugly. You know, her tra- I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that she just looks old. She looks older than me. <laughs> You think to you? Yeah. I disagree with that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Look, I don't have high self-esteem. Sorry, I don't believe I... Yeah. It sounded a little high. Yeah. So that you're just sitting at home. Like, right, Look exactly. at this old bit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if she was... If she was going to talk to me, I feel like, you know, she's pulling for you. Oh, they gave the old brother her own yeah. talk show. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Michael. Welcome to the mid room. She's a little fire starter. Hola. Hola. Michael, are you sober or not sober? Sober. We're all door dashing again. All right, Michael. Door dashing. Welcome to Big Dummy. As we're the original reindeer, door dasher. All right, Jerry, get us a record holder. Is it for the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? That's where Santa got the idea. <laughs> if I got to have a big mouth, I ought to have a big tongue. If you get where I'm going. Okay. Okay. I don't necessarily know that that correlates, but I'll, I'll give you that. Do I get a bigger throat with my big mouth? You're going to need one. Probably. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I just feel like I could bong beers better. Oh, yeah. Probably, for oh, yeah. sure. And maybe I wouldn't have to cut up all my pills in half. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are tiny anyway. They're, they're different sizes, but yeah. the big ones I got to cut in half. I don't want to choke on them. Yeah. Choked on an Advil last summer. I don't want to do any snow with one of the big nose people. Yeah. And yeah, they spend more on cocaine than mm-hmm. anyone. Oh, yeah. all right, You're not even invited to the party, dude. I mean, yeah. Dude, you cannot show up. Look at the size kind of, of your nose. It takes right. more. If you had that nose and landed in Vegas, the drug dealers would come to you. <laughs> They'd meet you and at the airport. Why always come to you first? Though. You couldn't hide. I a can't imagine thing. why. Couldn't hide a damn thing from the cops either. No. Come on, man. <laughs> Just put the flashlight up his nose. We can see it. All right, Michael. Here's your question: The loose skin hanging from the neck of a chicken is known as what? Horse skin. <laughs> is that the gobbler? Nope. Gizzard. Nope. No, no, no. Gizzard's what grinds up all the yep. crap in their gut. That the neck waddle. The, the waddle. Thing I can it, think of it would be a waddle, not it is a guzzle. It's a, a waddle. waddle. A waddle. With two T's, not to be confused with the dolphin's receiver. All right, your question. 
The character Laurie Strode was the main character in what horror movie franchise? Horror movie franchise. Does fran- How many movies does it take to make a franchise? I would say three or more, and this one is, I don't even know, there might be five, six, seven deep. Lori Strode. Um, In on her high horse. (laughs) (laughs) Can you go a little bit back in time and say Chucky? Even further back in time? Halloween? Halloween. Oh, that's who uh, 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 Jamie Lee Jamie Curtis, Lee Curtis yeah. Lord, trust me, it was news to me. Too late. Oh, right. Her character probably had a name. Chucky was scary, but it had Jennifer Tilly, so I approve. Was yeah. Chucky scary? I, I mean, I, I watched, watched parts of it as a kid. Play, and I found it more humorous. Yeah. All right, All right tough guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, certainly in the later movies, it got more humorous. But yeah, the first couple were legit. I just like the one that has Jennifer Tilly. Yeah. <laughs> I see a theme with you, Ted. Yeah. Right, Ted. Now, the one with Jennifer Tilly. <laughs> Jennifer Tilly, right. <laughs> right. You think I like watching poker? <laughs> <laughs> All right, your question. <laughs> Book em, Dano, is a catchphrase from what TV show? Uh, NCIS, because that's something cop related. Dragnet. Uh, nope. Dragnet. Hawaii Five-0. Oh, oh, was it? Oh, Dano, that's right. Yeah. Dano. What was Dragnet? Uh, just the, the truth. What was this? The, just the facts, man. Oh, okay. Just the facts, and What man. is this? Did he have a funny name? Like Joe Friday? Joe Friday or something. Believe it or not, the LAPD actually retired his badge number. Really? I believe it. It's like really? 714 or something like that, right? Like, legitimately, no cop will get that badge number in LA. Because hmm. of Joe Friday. All right, your question. In what movie is the Okinawan sword maker Hattori Hanzo a character? Moana. The Last Samurai? Yeah, not terrible guesses. Now, think Quentin Tarantino. Kill Bill. Kill Bill, yes. Oh, it sounded like a Hawaiian thing. But it's Japanese. Okinawan. As Okinawa. In Okinawa. Yeah. Duh. That's all right, man. All right, well, in his defense, there is a lot of Japanese descendants in Hawaii. That That is very true. But no Okinawa there. Now, an Okinawans consider themselves almost separate from Japan. Really? Kind of like the Canalonians in, in uh, Spain. Pars- yeah, in Spain. And the Quebec. It's kind of Gilles. embarrassing. I have a daughter named Katana after a Japanese sword. You named your daughter Katana? Yes, sir. All right. Make sure you listen to the shot of the day today. They've outdone you. <laughs> in a bad oh. way. All right, your question. <laughs> Multiple choice. At <laughs> what temperature do Fahrenheit and Celsius match? Is it zero degrees? 40 degrees, minus 40 degrees, or minus 17? (laughs) We got it. That's just high school science coming back in. More process of elimination, I'm guessing. As soon as you asked it, I just knew it. But I'm like, that's just sitting in class. Damn. All right. Zero degrees, 40 degrees, minus 40 degrees, or minus 17 degrees. But I'm more of a Calvin guy. Used all the time. I'm, I'm trying to remember if my math is right because I want to say 40, but I feel like my math is off. Well, what do you want to say? 40. I'll say minus, minus 17. Minus, minus 40. 40. Minus, minus 40. 40. Uh, that was okay. Yep, yep, that was where the math was wrong. I think. Mean, oh, <laughs> yeah. Damn. Question six. Question number six for you. What electronics company used the slogan, quote, just slightly ahead of our time? Microsoft. Panasonic? Panasonic. Question uh, still around. Question seven, yeah. yeah. I would have guessed Apple, maybe. That sounds like something they would say. They always had like shorter slogans. Think different. (laughs) All right, question. Everybody's got the same phone, but. You be go ahead and be an individual. Be different, even though we have the top selling phone that you all have. Keeps the doctor away. Yes. Crisp. <laughs> Your question What older U.S. city is known as the Cradle of Liberty? It's on the East Coast. Hey. Yeah. Uh, New York City. Nah. Nah, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Nope. It's not Philadelphia? Nope. Boston. Boston. Not you know it's going to be one of the three, right? Okay. Yeah. Cradle of Liberty. Cradle of Liberty. <laughs> What's over in 
Boston has a liberty. A lot. Well, I mean, you got the Boston Tea Party. You got old Paul Revere. Uh, Bull R- Bunker oh, Hill. A lot of stuff happened there. Liberty Liberty you want me to keep going? Or? <laughs> yeah. The Red Sox. Red I mean, they literally have the, what's it, the Freedom or Liberty Walk or whatever. And you go I think see, the Liberty Walk you is. You see, like, the old North Church and all that right stuff. Right, you are, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Miles. Boston Marathon. Boston Marathon. All right, Boston. the question. What famous <laughs> painting was stolen from an Oslo museum in 1994? A lot of people confuse this for the poster to Home Alone. It's what a lot of guys like to do in bed. Oh, that was a hint, Mike. I know it. You guys actually gave me a question why I answered this answer, and it was wrong because it's the screaming man. I don't know the actual name of it, but I even think the artist was. I can't even remember him. Look at him. It's the, the scream. Mm, scream. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the scream. He's still going. Do you think know. that they modeled the Home Alone poster after the scream? Uh, no, I just think you don't think so. Him. No. It's also because uh, the screen was already a massive painting. I mean, it's not quite Mona Lisa, but it's close. And then you do this poster, which basically is exactly the same thing. Right. No, I'm, no, I'm thinking they borrowed from. It. He, he's he's Macaulay Culkin is is surprised. Are you sure? Where well, no, where the scream? It's Munch. He's getting ready to eat something. What? Uh, no, 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 no. He's <laughs> screaming from pain because remember he shaves and puts on aftershave. It. He's a child. Right. So he doesn't know ah. how it's going to hurt. I'm saying might, I have no idea, and I don't know how to prove it, but I'm sticking by. It. And when you mentioned that, Ted, you're absolutely right. That's the only time that he actually does the trademark slap his face and scream. It was yeah. never out of fear. And yet we, we've associated that. Yeah. You could also use it uh, in jiu-jitsu. What? If you're in a bad spot. Home alone, man. Protect that neck. Oh, protect the neck. <laughs> Do the home alone, Ted. Home alone. <laughs> Hello, Cheyenne. Well, you, Welcome to the men's room. didn't shrimp out. Well, then. Hola. Hola. Cheyenne, you on team sober or team not sober? What the hell's going on with our phones? I don't know, man. I, well, you know, I did read a story today where everybody's phone's supposed to be messed up today for whatever reason. But this has been going on for days, so who knows? All right, Cheyenne, uh, your Guinness record for the biggest nose, biggest ears, biggest lips, or the longest hair? I got to go with the longest hair. Longest hair. How long is your hair now, or do you have any? I used to have hair down the middle of my back. It's, uh, it's cut short now, but for a while I did. Now, was this hair growing from your head, or you just had a hairy back? <laughs> no, it was from my head. Okay, so I thought I'd check, you know. want to cover all our bases here. All right. Here is your question. What late actress was the daughter of actress Debbie Reynolds and the mother of actress Billy Lord? Not that there's nepotism in Hollywood or anything. <laughs> Debbie Reynolds was her mom. Billy Lord was her daughter. Who the hell's Billy Lord? She's kind of, I can't even say up and coming. She's doing all right for not quite A lister, but like B plus lister. She's the granddaughter of uh, Debbie uh, Reynolds. Debbie right. Reynolds. Come on, man. I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have no idea. <laughs> Carrie Fisher? <laughs> Carrie Fisher. <laughs> So there's Debbie Reynolds, Princess Leia, <laughs> Billy Lord, and then whoever Billy Lord's kid is, uh, they'll be the next star. They work so hard. All right, your question. In 2000, the Black Crows released a live album recorded with what legendary guitar player? Uh, that would be Jimmy Page. Wow. Okay. Nice job. All right. I remember nice job. when that came out, but I barely remember that it exists now. I, didn't, you know what I, I totally mean? forgot about it. Yeah, the that's Black I mean. Crows get more love. Say that again. I don't, like, why don't they get more love? Like, that's a solid rock band. That, like, whenever you have conversations, they just don't come up a lot. I think they're a solid rock band, but one, there's a couple of things that go into the world of rock. One, not everything can sound absolutely identical, which is where I think some of it goes, right? So if you All like right. them, you'll always like them. If you don't like them, you never will. And also, at that time, rock was still a lot of outspoken drug addicts going crazy and that kind of thing. And, and to their credit, kind of like Shine Down Now, that's just not their deal. Yeah, I like the Black Crows. And that's what's crazy. Like, Shine Down, you almost never see an interview with them. You don't read anything crazy about them. You're waking up a hook. Mm-hmm. And they put out an album, so five million copies. Yep. Mm-hmm. Game is Big Dummy, 206-803-ROCK. Big Dummy! Hello, Miro. Welcome to the men's room. Smell it. Oh, yeah. Hola. Miro, are you sober or not sober? I am sober. Welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, what's the world record you taking? Biggest nose, biggest ears, biggest lips, or longest hair? Uh, biggest lips. Biggest lips for Miro. Biggest lips. All right, All right Big Lip Miro. 
Here is your question. <laughs> Which U.S. president was responsible for the Louisiana Purchase? Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. Uh, uh, Jefferson. Boom. Got it. One and done. Damn. All right, hang on with your one Impressive. and done this. Today's 50-50 questions. We are pitting, well, the shorter of our actors together. And uh, so I will give you two actors. You tell me which one is taller. We now have Jonah Hill taking on Danny Trejo. Which one is taller, Jonah Hill or Danny? Wow. Wow, I don't even know either one of those two guys. You'd recognize uh, but before, both. Yeah. You'd recognize them. Okay, but before I answer that, i got to give a shout-out to the Wits End tonight. I'll be appearing at another open mic there. Uh, there are probably about a dozen folks there. You get three songs, 15 minutes. It'll be a fun time. they got good sandwiches. Stop on by. And uh, Jonah Hill, I'll guess. It says Jonah Hill. Got it. So here's the thing. Jonah Hill is five foot seven. All right. Danny Trejo, who you look at and you're like, this man would kill you. And he might. Five foot five. All right. Yeah. I'll you be down. Just wouldn't see it, man. Game is Big Dummy, 206 803 Rock. Big Dummy. Hello, Rachel. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, you liquored up whore. <laughs> Hola. Hola. God, you sound like my wife. Rachel, are you sober or not sober? Not sober. Well, kettle. Okay, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Your Guinness record, biggest nose, biggest ears, biggest lips, or longest hair? Oh, hey, hold, hold on. on. Hold on. Hold on, on now, Rachel. Once again, Coming in on fire. the seven words you can't say on the radio. Coming in hot. Wow. Sucker, mother, and please keep those words in mind when calling. Now, back to the program. All right, big-eared Rachel, here is your question. What plant takes its name from the Chinese words for man root? Mandrake? That's about a bad guess. Ginger? Ginseng. Oh, ginseng. Hey, baby. Open my pants, sick of my ginseng. <laughs> That's how Shaq does it. A natural muscle relaxer. I got big old ginseng in my pants. <laughs> All right, your question. Fall Out Boy, the band, is named after Fall Out Boy, the sidekick to what Simpsons-inspired superhero? Millennial Man? Hard Man? That would be Howard Stern. No, Radioactive Man. Oh, Radioactive Man. Radioactive okay. Man. Oh, yeah. Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy, yeah. All right, Rachel, your question. What phenomenon is named for the French words for already seen? Deja vu. Aha. Nice job, Rachel. Nice. Job. Also, the name of multiple strip clubs. I was just about to say, I think it's more famous for that now. I think I've been here before. It's because you're, you, go in, you come here every night. Oh. Well, we also have one in every major city. Uh -huh. Perf. Perf. Without Perf. a doubt. Mm -hmm. This place looks familiar. <laughs> More of a big dummy coming up. 206803 Rock. Meet the New Balance Fuel Cell 4040 V7. The choice of elite ball players like Michael Harris. Engineered for responsiveness and agility. This versatile option is built for speed demons who demand peak performance. With fuel cell foam underfoot and a synthetic mesh upper. Experience unparalleled breathability, comfort, and a secure fit as you round the bases. The nitrogen infused fuel cell midsole propels you forward with every step, ensuring you stay ahead of the game. Learn more and purchase the 4040 at newbalance.com. Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in, where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win. You don't pay. Phillips Law Firm. Justice for you. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. 
Lakeside Milam Recovery Centers helps men and women of all ages set aside alcohol and drugs and regain control of their lives. If you know a change is needed, call 833-33-STEP-1. Serving our community for over 40 years and covered by most major insurers, Lakeside Milam provides all that's needed, education, inpatient and outpatient care, mental health, medication-assisted treatment, and much more. Lakeside Milam Recovery Centers at lakesidemilam.com. Call 833-33-STEP-1. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Game is big, Johnny. 206-803 Rock Steve, who is our next contestant ready to play the big game? Hello, Willis. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Oh, I know. Willis, are you sober or not sober? Sober. Sober, Willis. Welcome to Big Dummy. Yep, yep. Okay. All right, Willis, our men's room poll. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're going to have a Guinness World Record. Will it be for the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? Uh, I don't know. Longest penis? Is that an option? Nope. Oh. How about worse, <laughs> worse jokes? <laughs> Willis, I got it. I just, I'm sorry. It took me a second. No, Willis, your well, Guinness I've World Record. i to do the helicopter, and I'm incapable, so that would be not. Let's just move on. Yeah, Jesus okay. Christ, All dummy. Right. Hello, Scott. Welcome to the men's room. Hello. Hola. Hola. Scott, are you sober or not sober? I am sober. All right, Scott. Welcome to the program and Big Dummy. Our men's room poll. You're going to have a Guinness World Record. Is it for the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? Longest hair. Longest hair. Okay. How long is your hair now? Oh, you know, it's, uh, it's close crop, but I've had it shoulder length before. What what got you to cut it from shoulder length to the uh, close close cropped? Uh, maturity. Oh, right. okay. Nice. That was gonna be like Lord Farquaad, or sometimes nature. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Plenty of hair. Okay. Okay. Well, look, seventy five percent of the studio is like f you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know that's fair. I think the longest hair in my body is probably in my nose. All right. Here is your question. Sagdayev, or Sagdayev, is the last name of what comical TV and movie character? Can you say it one more time? Sagdayev, S-A-G-D-I-Y-E-V. Could be Sagdayev, Sagdayev. Balki? That's not a bad guess, ma'am. It is not Balki. It's Zanad. It's Borat. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Balky. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, old. I watched it when I was a kid. Perfect Strangers. It was a good show. Yeah. yeah. What was it a spinoff from? It was a spinoff, and I cannot remember. Was it from Family Matters? I think. Because Family Matters is in Chicago as well. It may have been Family Matters. Yeah. Uh, yes. All right. Look at Big Brain on Ted. All Ooh. right. Where on a champagne bottle would you find the a graph? Uh, would that be the rim right underneath the cork? Is that no. the little thing at the bottom of the yeah, bottle? Yeah, the dent in the, the bottom. Punt. The uh, punt is the dent at the bottom of the bottle. Punt with a okay. P. Uh, the uh, a graph is the wire frame that holds the cork. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. I'm the big dummy. Yes. Your question. Not yet. And hang in there. A tetrapod okay. is a creature with how many feet? Uh, five. What animal has five feet? I'll say ten. I don't know. I don't know. What animal has ten? Centipede. Centipede. Why don't we just go with the simple one? Centipede that's been picked on. I don't know. Uh, four. Four. Mm-hmm. You know, like most of the animals we see in the wild. All right. Yeah. Spiders. Humans are constant. That's a double tetrapod. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. The question, what is the NATO phonetic alphabet word for the letter P? <laughs> <laughs> Stop being such a... Uh, <laughs> play? I don't know. Man. God damn it. You guys can't think of... I'll give no. you a hint. Uh, is it a country? No. It is... Uh, plasma. Who do you think is getting smoothed up in Smurfette? 
Papa. Papa. There you oh. go. Uh. And Ted also believes that Papa Smurf is having sex with Smurf. That's it. <laughs> Question five. You could have said anybody. <laughs> <laughs> My one buddy, man, his daughter, that's what she calls him. Papa Smurf or Papa? No, just Papa. Just Papa. All but right. it's just funny. Like, every time I hear that now, I can just hear, Papa? It's weird, you know. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it, but you rarely hear that, at least in the States. Yeah. When we were in Europe, dude, I mean, that, every kid, Papa, Papa, yeah. Papa, Papa, Papa. It sounds nicer. It that sounds like respectful and nicer and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Just straight up, Dad. Father, <laughs> if my daughter says father, I know that she's about to make a request for something. Father, how much money do you need? Let's just get to it. Do you use it? What's that? I got, look, I'm your father. <laughs> yeah, but usually it's not an angry thing. Usually it's consoling them about something that's really bugging them. And you say, hey, listen, I'm your father. I love you. We will figure this out. That kind of thing. I think in a couple of years it will be, I'm your father, damn it. Right. <laughs> you will be home by 930. <laughs> right. right now, it's still good stuff. All right, your question, what does the abbreviation MPEG stand for in the video and audio compressing format? MPEG. Motion picture. Uh... Expanding graphic. I don't know. See, yours makes more sense. These guys actually sound cocky. Stands for Moving Picture Expert Group. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Very important impacts. All right, the question What is the capital of Turkey? Istanbul. That's most uh, people's first example. Nope. Oh, oh, oh. Let's rephrase this. Uh, Name another city in Istanbul. <laughs> that, we've gotten to that point, yes. <laughs> Gravy. No, uh, Ankara. 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 Okay. <laughs> Question number seven, Scott. I'm from Gravy, Turkey. Ouch. Question number seven. What fleshy muscular organ is joined to the hyoid bone? What fleshy muscular organ is joined to the hyoid bone? Fleshy. Muscular. Either Mike is hitting on me or he got the right answer. Oh, yeah. I was like, I said fleshy and he did that to me. I'm <laughs> guessing that's the uh, the heart. Nope. It's one of the few organs that you can visually look at every single day without Hello? cursing yourself out. Nope. Well, it's the only the muscle eye? that's only attached at one end. If I'm at, not Yes, it is. Oh, the tongue. Old, tongue. The tongue. Tongue. It provides taste and pleasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> Sorry, I heard that. She's not. Depends on what you're tasting. <laughs> Typically, when it's delivering pleasure, you're not loving the taste. All right. Your question. <laughs> There's a reason why you don't just find that flavor with, like, a blow pop. You know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it stays in one place. You know? We understand what it's about. One. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your question. What actor bought the first Hummer made for a civilian use? Oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Okay. Nice job. Yes, Hummer as in the vehicle. How do you know? <laughs> Game is picked up at 206803 Rock. We just let everybody get one of these now. <laughs> <laughs> Camera in the eyes. <laughs> Hello, Gary. Welcome to the men's room. Hello, Gary. Hola. Hola. Hey. Hola. Gary, uh, a sober, not sober. I am not sober, thank you very much. Gary, are you in a cave? Do you need help? Do you want someone to be oh, sent to save you? <laughs> All right. Uh, Gary, your Guinness record. Biggest nose, biggest ears, biggest lips, or longest hair? I'm going with hair. Hair it is. All right, Harry, Gary. Here is your question. How many strikes make up a perfect 10-pin bowling game? That would be 11. 13. 12. 12. 12. 12. Yeah. 12. Because there's nine frames, then you got to get thir three in the tenth. Correct. Okay. All right. Took me a second <laughs> to get there. I have to make sure I can pronounce these right. All right. The zygomatic, the ethmoid, and the vomer bones are all part of what larger bony structure? Damn, Mike, what are you, a freaking doctor? No. Was a merit badge? No, there was a. What's that? General vicinity, your skull. 
And why do you know this one? Uh, the show Archer brought up the zygomatic bone at one point. I was like, that's a cool sounding bone name. And that is where you learned it. Yes. It is amazing See, where we get information. Punched him in the face and broke his zygomatic bone. Ah, okay. All right, your question. What is the name of the summer camp in the Friday the 13th movie series? Can't don't go there. <laughs> I have no clue. Camp Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake. Sounds lovely. You know there's a mo- uh, woman out there named Crystal Lake. Yes. <laughs> That's where they smoke meth. I went to school with Crystal Clear. Did you really? Yes. Jesus no way. God. I did. All right, your question. In bingo, what two numbers is two fat ladies? Repeat that, please. In bingo, what number is called two fat ladies? <laughs> it, that would have been my guess. Come on, Ted, think about it. Just picture all the numbers, all right? Double zero eight. Oh. 88. 88. Okay. 88. It comes up to 88? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why I keep losing. <laughs> <laughs> Mine only goes to 50. <laughs> <laughs> After 69, I stopped counting. <laughs> Full <laughs> disclosure, if you're playing bingo with me in a bar, when it hits B69, I will go. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> what was George Collins on? Let's do the 68. You do me and I'll owe you one. <laughs> All right. Your question, who was the director of the FBI from 1924 to 1972? Oh, that's that uh, pen guy, J. Edgar Hoover. All right, you got it. Nice job. Game is Big Dummy, 206-803-ROW. Uh, somebody here, Miles, says, I worked with a woman named Crystal Showers. Oh. That is a poor Ooh. name if I've ever heard say, of say, one. I've clicked on that tab. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Matthew. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. Hola. Matthew, sober or not sober? I'm uh, not so sober. All right, Matthew, welcome to Big Dummy. What's going to be your uh, Guinness you. record? Uh, biggest nose, ears, lips, or the longest hair? Uh, give me those ears. Big ears. Okay. You got them, Dumbo. Like baby New Year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matthew. <laughs> Nobody else was thinking that. What? No, you were just quick, man. Yeah, I've been waiting two hours for somebody to say ears. Uh, just to do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Matthew, here's your question. It's multiple choice. France, Spain, Canada, or the United States? What was the first country to institute an eight-hour workday? France, Spain, Canada, or the U.S.? Nobody works like the U.S., so let's say the U.S. Canada? Spain. Spain. Uh I think they've uh, shrunk that down a bit. (laughs) Thank you. Yep. Dad, right. are you sure about that bingo question? I mean, I'm not positive, but that's the information I got. Why? What do you got? That's why when you said 88, I'm like, I, 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 everything I'm looking at, it only goes 1 through 75. I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> that's why <laughs> right. you're I'm playing not, a different bingo. I'm man. not losing my mind. Like I was like, I've never seen an 80 in bingo. There's no fat ladies in Ted's bingo. Oh, oh, I see how it is, Ted. Your bingo, you can't have two fat ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's like pool. You got a bar size. Unless you play it in the morning. You got regulation. It just depends on the bingo game you're in. Or maybe there's different versions of bingo. Is it UK bingo? Is it US bingo? What's the difference between UK and US bingo? The numbers. Uh, Okay. Well, (laughs) (laughs) that explains it. All right, Matthew, your question. (laughs) What type of blood cells create antibodies? What type of what? Blood cells create antibodies. White blood cells. (laughs) Got it. Nice job, my nice job. Yeah. <laughs> Game is uh, Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. Hello, Thomas. Welcome to the binge room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. Thomas, sober or not sober? I was waiting for uh, this game to start before I started drinking, and I picked it up, so I just caught me a rainy. All right. All right. Thomas. Okay, our men's room poll. You're going to be a Guinness World Record holder. Is it for the biggest nose, the biggest ears, the biggest lips, or the longest hair? Oh. I'm going with hair because you're not stuck with it, and you can cut it if you get tired of it. That's okay. Nose, All right. You're kind of stuck with it. That's actually the most reasonably thought-out answer we've gotten today. Ted, you're right. So yeah. here's the thing. So the bingo questions. In British, it could be 88. In the U.S., it's a 75. But if we're playing in the U.S., it would be B8, not 88. All right. Yeah, because so, like you asked it, and I saw Mike's in 88 in my head. I'm like, man, I, I've played I played 
bingo decently regularly now. I'm just like, I don't remember Dobbin a eight. Okay, now eight. look. You can do your thing with 69, but then you need to add to this. So if you get B8, you need to yell, fat ladies. Are they and, singing? Hey, just see if people know. And then when they ask and get mad at you, they're going to stand you up and come can over and beat your ass. But I would recommend you look around first. That's a huge bitch. No. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Huge bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Double <All right>. whopper. <laughs> All, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, your question. You can find Grand Teton National Park in what state? Ooh. Ah, here's my one and down. I used to be a truck driver, so that's Wyoming. One and done. All right, truck driving Thomas. Since you're one and done, we have our 50-50 question. So we have uh, celebrities and their heights. I'm going to ask you to tell me which one of these two is taller. So let's go with... Okay. All right. Okay. Everyone knows it brings up Tom Cruise, right? Mm-hmm. So Tom Cruise or Johnny Galecki? Johnny Galecki. Oh, he's the guy from Sheldon. Uh, no, he was the uh, no. curly-haired roommate of Sheldon. Yeah. But yeah, Big Bang. Thing. Christmas vacation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, he is kind of short. Well, they're all um, short. But yeah. Uh, let's go Johnny Galecki's taller. Ooh. Believe it or not, Tom Cruise checks in at a towering five foot seven. Johnny Galecki is five foot five. Aha. Five foot five. Game is Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. Big Dummy. The calls are gone. Oh, yeah. Oh, we had one other guy on there, but there was a, a notation that said he was wasted. So I'm going to give you... <laughs> all right. And they are not there, so I tend to believe that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys... First right. one to uh, answer correctly wins. All right. We've got a few of them here. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to go celebrity heights here. Do we have to ring in? What are your sounds? Hmm. Ooh. Ding. You're going ding? Tell you what you got. Boom. Boom. Ding and boom. Mike? Dong. Dong. So ding, dong, boom? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I met him once. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Which one is taller? We have David Spade going against Joe Pesci. Boom. Ding. I think it's Mike. Uh, I'll go David Spade. You are correct. David Spade is 5'5". Joe Pesci is 5'3". Give us a real question. One more. Kim Jong versus Kevin Hart. Boom. Ted. Kevin Hart's taller. Kim Kim Jong. Jong. Kim Jong's 5'5". Kevin Hart is 5'4". What do you mean? Let me, all right, you want a real question here? Yep. All right. It's been well, finishing out. Now you guys know that. You know that. All right. Here's one for you. What is the more common and deceptive name for iron sulfide? Iron sulfide. Mm-hmm. Boom. Ted. Sulfuric acid. No. Miles. Iron Chance sulfide. to steal. Alloy. It's, it's now the more common and deceptive name for iron sulfide is fool's gold. Oh, deceptive. Mm-hmm, uh-huh. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that makes mm-hmm. sense. All right, Ted. It's what most of y'all are wearing around your neck. You, Ted, I believe you'll get this. What sport has official rules to cover T intervals? Uh, cricket? Cricket. Cricket is correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where we started it. Head Chef is uh, on the way. Ted's Meat and Potatoes heading south of the border. And we've got your emails coming up next for the men's room at KISW.com. Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in. Where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win, you don't pay. Phillips Law Firm, justice for you. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and nada yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger. 
offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Yo, next round is about to start. You ready? Yeah, yeah, just shopping for a car in Carvana. For real? Yeah, Carvana makes it super convenient to shop whenever, wherever. For real? That's a ton of car options. Yep, and these are all within my price range. For really real? You can afford that? Yeah, with Carvana. And boom, just like that, I'm getting it delivered in a couple days. For really, really real? You just bought a car. For real, and you just lost. My turn. Visit Carvana.com to shop for thousands of vehicles under $20,000. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out. Yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and nada yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger. Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. In the fast-paced world of attacking, speed is everything. And that's where the Furon 7 Plus shines. Engineered for accuracy and precision at a rapid pace, it's your secret weapon on the pitch. Experience overall comfort and precise striking, even in the game's fastest moments. The nylon outsole, with its V-shaped stud configuration, is designed for firm ground, giving you the grip you need to outmaneuver your opponents. Step up your attacking game and learn more, and purchase the Furon at NewBalance.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Pearl Jam coming to town on their Dark Matter World Tour Climate Pledge Arena May 28th and May the 30th. We've got your tickets all this week. Look at you. Yes. Kevin's got more tonight. We've got more for you right now. You want to text the word ALIVE. ALIVE to 206-803-ROCK. Your chance to win those tickets. Again, 206-803-ROCK. The secret word is ALIVE. Uh, First time for a a few emails now from the men's room at KISW.com. You've got Well, I'll jump right into the birthdays of Ola Bacholas. I'd like to wish my great niece Harlow, my niece's daughter, a very happy birthday. Born this morning at 6 a.m. Nice. Love you, kid, and super proud of your parents. Also, I'd like to wish my bestest friend Lenny a happy birthday. Damn, you're old. How about a, a plethora of farts? Uh, thanks, guys. That from Troy. <laughs> All the miles, Phil, Ted, and Mike. Another year has passed, and our triplets, Katie, Audrey, and Cameron, turned 17 today, gentlemen. The first year of the kids uh, driving has been eventful. Flat tires, dead batteries, and one total car, but no injuries, thank goodness. I uh, have made our bank account a little lighter, and my alcohol consumption heavier. Uh, Linda's doing much better than I am. Uh, anyway, I'll give Audrey a bunch of farts, give Katie a man screaming like a stealth fighter jet, and give Cameron a Fred Sanford big dummy. Happy 17th birthday, your great kids. That from Robert and Linda, the men's room pizza making and bourbon drinking friends from Bird Crest. Oh, God. <laughs> you big dummy. Guys, today's my handsome husband, Stephen's birthday. Yeah. We're high school uh, sweethearts that have been together for 12 years now and couldn't be more proud to have watched uh, you become the man you are today. He's my best friend, best dad to our boy, Theo. 
I couldn't ask for a better partner to go through this crazy life with. When you say he's the best dad, how many dads does Theo have? He's got a lot of kids. <laughs> we love to give him a fish sandwich montage and the dirty Germans talking about being the sexy firefighter that he is. Happy birthday, my love. Lots of love that from uh, Sierra and Theodore. Can I get a, a filet of sandwich? fish sandwich? Oh, you know I got I have a right. fish sandwich. Oh, brother, can I have a fish sandwich? Put the cheese and the tartar on the side. Our fish sandwich. Is it too early for a fish sandwich? A hot cheese and tartar on the side. Oh, yeah. I smell the fish, fish sandwich. sandwich. Maybe Are some dinner relish in the morning. Fish sandwich. At noon. At noon. And at night. Can I buy you a fish sandwich? Oh, you don't want a fish sandwich? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter if you're sexy or not. Once you dress as a firefighter, you become instantly sexy. So yeah, Steve and I imagine when you're not wearing it, you're just this big, ugly man. But once you get dressed up, suddenly, like, yeah, give me your hose. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, you get to play as a siren. I know it's a whole neighborhood. And then also you get to play with your own hose a lot. Yeah. Hey, bitches, it's my 58th trip around the sun. I was hoping to hear another hilarious new sexual conquest story from the old captain. Uh, thanks, guys, for keeping me sane during my hour commute every night. That from Nitro Mike. Ooh, well, uh, holy. It goes to the old Jabby Jans, I had to call it a sexual conquest. Basically, the ladies just surrendered their territory, if you know what I'm saying. I started the Grand Teton to work my way down to Lake Titicaca. That's just what the captain does. That's actually a location, don't get upset. Crunch bears. All right, guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaz, a Dirty Germans, brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world-famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, shrine of flesh. Thank you, Bob. A couple extra emails. Uh, Ted Smith is the subject. Oh, All right. God. It says, is Ted Smith single? That from the lovely Aaron, or the dude named Aaron? We don't know. The name's Aaron. Mm hmm Hmm. Well, if you're a dude or a woman, yes. Yeah, <laughs> either way. <laughs> Look it up. Dude, woman, man. Dude, woman, man. Dude, woman, man. Unbelievable stories is the subject. Guys, uh, catching up on the uh, podcast on the uh, Odyssey app, Ola Bacholas, my wife and her family, my wife, her daughter, 12 at the time, sister, mom, and dad, were at the Route 91 Harvest Festival the night it was shot at. Only her sister was injured physically with a broken leg. Uh, many ongoing years of PTSD, our daughter decided to go to UNLV for college. And was also there during the most recent shooting. Jesus, man. That from uh, VH. As far as bite stories. Guys, about 10 years ago, my family went to Maui for eight glorious days. The morning of the first full day there, my wife was walking on the resort grounds and got bit by a spider on her leg. The bite got so bad so quickly, we went to a nearby urgent care clinic. Now, when the doctor came in, he was such a server guy stereotype, it was hilarious. Bleach blonde hair, super tan, wearing uh, pastels, flip-flops with a puka shell necklace. Uh, when he saw the bite, he said, whoa, gnarly, <laughs> just like Spicoli. A uh, doc said it probably was a local yellow spider that's a cousin of the brown recluse. She had to go on antibiotics, stay out of the water, and the sun for the entire trip. Damn. So she basically <laughs> sat in, in her condo on the balcony Damn. in the shade while I played in the pool with our kids for a week. Vacation completely sucked for her. Cheers, guys. And from Jim, your loyal Pasco podcaster on the Odyssey app. Did it? He said for her. Yeah, I don't know. She was... He was playing with the kids at the pool. Maybe that she, is a good point. She was like, I want to go in the yeah. sun, but this is quite relaxing. Kids aren't here. Yeah. And uh, one more from the extra emails. Uh, the subject, 10 songs that did not age well from our sit and spin on uh, Tuesday's broadcast. Mm -hmm. Basically, the idea was these are rock songs for a, a variety of different reasons. They did not age well based on the fact that uh, some lyrical references that are not appropriate for uh, from uh, things from a technological standpoint that just don't exist anymore. Sure. Like the song Star 69 or whatever that was or references to cassette sure. tapes, REM. Uh, what was it? Uh, put Another Dime in the Jukebox. Correct. Right. I love rock and roll and all that. Olaviches, this is uh, Sean from Manchganistan. That would be Manchester, New Hampshire. I've been listening to you guys for well over 10 years now. Listening to your podcast on the Odyssey app the other day. You guys listed off the 10 songs that did not age well, and you forgot a song that probably tops them all. 
Mr. Tinker Train by the Prince of Darkness himself, Ozzy Osbourne. By the way, please tell Thrill that I use his uh, cheers every time the guys are over for a few drinks, and it will be definitely be used at my wedding. Coming up nice. in August. Sean, I looked up the uh, the lyrics to uh, to Mr. Tinker Train. I am not familiar with the song. What's okay. it called? Mr. Mr. Tinker Train. <laughs> yeah, Castle plays it all the time. It's, a, it's an Ozzy Osbourne song. Literally, the first line is, would you like some sweeties, little girl? Yes. Mm. And then it follows. Jesus. Come a little closer. I'm going to show you a brand new world tonight. I've got a palace full of fantasy, ready made just for you and me. Once you're there, I'm going to take you for a ride. I got a one-way ticket to take you to the other side. I got a one-way ticket, so come along. And don't be shy. They call me Mr. Tinker Train. That's how I got my name. They call me Mr. Tinker Train. So come along and play my game. You will never be the same. And it continues. And it continues. And it continues. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see what you're talking about there. As far as being a little bit inappropriate. Oh, yeah, I recognize this yeah. song. Yep. I'm not the biggest lyrics guy. Yeah, you know the chorus, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, if it's a song about drinking, I'll learn the lyrics. It's also selling drugs. Can you understand sure. them half the time? Yeah, a lot of times. Like, I don't know what they're saying exactly. in this song. I like the song. just not exactly sure what they just said. Ozzy's easier to understand when he sings than when he speaks. That is for sure. Yeah. Yep. Coming up, we will uh, drink and toast with a shot of the day. But first... Time to open wide and sample Ted's meats and potatoes. Now, here's your host, head chef of the men's room. The Ted Nugent. Head chef in the house. Thank you, folks. Thank you. So, this is kind of interesting and not shocking. It just says 99% of Americans have a local Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the top of the show, we started talking about this a little bit. You're right. Like, there's different, different varieties of Mexican restaurants. Sure. Right? So, like, sometimes you just want to go to a taco truck. Yes. You know, there's some yes. there's some Mexican restaurants I like that, are, to me, are a little higher end. And then there's some that are super authentic. It just depends on the mood you're in. That is for sure. And the region they're trying to represent a lot of the times, as far as the differences in the food. Right. What do you think is the best Mexican restaurant you've been to? Ooh. In Seattle? Or in general. Uh, ooh, wow. Not, I you, mean, you can't pick one you ate at in Mexico. No, Southern California's got, I think, well, the, the thing is, when I go to a Mexican restaurant in Mexico, it's nothing like any of the Mexican restaurants here. Mm-hmm. Right? You, All right. You have some of the same names, but the food, I mean, it's entirely. Everything's fresh. It's just a different experience. Uh, do you remember that place, Mexico, used to be at... Uh, oh, Pacific Place. Pacific Place. Mm-hmm. I, I remember. I remember I, I hit you to it. You Were did you, hit me to yeah. it. And I don't remember if it was that good. I have no negative thoughts about it, but also I go there and drink. I always had a good time, so... Their food was very good, and it was weird because it looked like a chain restaurant, but it was just a, it was just, it was just, that just one. the one. Rio yeah. Azul and uh, Palm Springs is great. I like Chupacabra on... Uh, Ooh, on yeah, Chupacabra's strong. That's that's a pretty good call. El Camino in my neighborhood in uh, Fremont. If you just want tacos, Red Star is always good. Red Star is good. Have you also been to the one down in Georgetown? Yeah, uh, Fonda Luca something. Catina, the Fonda Catina or whatever. That one's yeah, pretty good. That's but solid. also truthfully, like I mean, and granted, where I grew up in the D.C. area is a lot of Hispanics, but, but not, not Mexican, as, but not as many Mexicans. So when I first moved out here, I was like, man, like it's pretty much just Mexicans. But I mean, like I still go to Aztecs. Azteca, Azteca? Yeah. their Mexican pizza is phenomenal. Uh, I like a Mexican just pizza, just like the ones down in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, man, their Mexican pasta is unbelievable. Mexican uh, <laughs> cheesecake, crazy <laughs> good. <laughs> well, and for the most part, most most of what we think is Mexican food is more kind of Mexican American food. Yeah, for sure. You know, you know what I mean. So what's like, your what's your what's your go to signature? It, it, you don't know dish. what else is on the menu. You just go. I will well, try this. Yeah. You're going to go into a Mexican restaurant. What, what are you guaranteed to... Like, you always said the French dip is the standard for a sandwich place or a restaurant. If they nail the French dip, then you know, like, then they probably right. make other good stuff. Yeah. If they can't nail it, the place is garbage. For me, it's enchiladas. Like, if I don't really recognize anything on the menu... But I was telling Mike, if I go to a sit-down restaurant, I either get a taco plate or carne asada. Carne asada, that, it's okay. hard to go yeah. wrong with that. Almost, uh, almost every time. And I don't... Because I like burritos, but burritos to me is like... Chipotle, Taco Del Mar of the world. Right, right. I, I don't know why. I just don't order them in a restaurant. Yeah. Now, this is going to sound crazy, but for me, the first thing I judge is the quality of the chips. Are they fresh yes. fried? Are they salty enough? Are they crunchy? Mm-hmm. Are they delicious? And the salsa. Now, guac, that's a different level, and you can judge it on that, but I, I'm just going with the basic two things back to the French dip. Yeah. If you have great salsa or pico or whatever you have with your chips, then I know for the most part the rest of the meal is going to be great. 
Yeah, and look, that's a great part about Austin. You can just pop into some of the restaurants and just grab chips. Ooh, Mm -hmm. nice. But I think my go-to is uh, I'm with uh, Mike's wife and the chimichanga. If they have a chimichanga, I am down with it. I like chimichangas. I, I don't know. What meat do you want? Depends on what they got. Right. So, so typically the pork, oh, pull, the pull, beef. If they have pulled pork, I'll do that. If they have a carne asada, I'll do that. Chicken's always good. I mean, chicken's good, but chicken's chicken. Right? I feel like the pork, do they do anything to the pork or is it just pulled pork? Well, it's carnitas, then it's going to be flavorful. I think chicken can be better, too, because a lot of places will uh, braise it or whatever. They so do. it's kind of sitting in that stew. I would recommend Especially to anyone. Especially lime chicken on a taco from so, barbacoa. If they barbacoa have, is barbacoa. always good, right? right. And that's both, both right? Even in a place that mm-hmm. sucks, their barbacoa is still good enough for your life. Short rib. Yeah. So this is according to some new D, uh, D some new D's, some new data yeah. for the Pew, uh, Pew Research Center. Center. Oh, struggling. Ninety nine percent of Americans have a local Mexican restaurant. They say local is within the same county. Okay. Yeah. Depending where you live, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I have favorite Mexican restaurants in almost every county in the state. <laughs> If I'm up in uh, Snohomish County, uh, I was going to say, catch me, uh, said it earlier, can't think of it now. <laughs> Farther you go east in the state, the uh, not better, but the more Mexican options you have. Mm-hmm. Estapa, that's my place up north. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. But I was saying earlier, like, I like Azteca, my buddy, it's not that he doesn't like it, he's just loyal to Las Margaritas. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so a lot of people have one close to them that they like. Uh, 85% of the U.S. counties have a Mexican restaurant, but the 15 15- uh, percent that don't basically there's nobody living there if there's not a mexican right, restaurant right. you're probably somewhere in wyoming or montana we're like i would agree there's yeah. just not people uh i brought this up before i will say one of the weirdest things again the first time i went to london or just to europe was i was just like where's where's the tacos and they're just like yeah not really a thing here and i'm like oh it, it just I'm so used to being in America, and Mexico's right there. There's a ton of Mexicans that come over, and mm-hmm. Mexican American. Like we're just so used to that, almost as like part of our culture. That I'm like, mm-hmm. what's going on, London? Well, yeah. London, it's all Indian restaurants. It is. Well, in South Carolina too, it was probably one of the worst Mexican restaurants I've ever been to. <laughs> uh, the a decent chunk of the pricey Mexican restaurants are in expensive urban areas like L.A. County, mm-hmm. Cook County, where Chicago is. Uh, New York County, obviously, where New York City is. Uh, the other thing, too, is like Mexican food, like they're saying here, like it's generally quick, easy, and affordable. Agreed. You go to some kind of fancier high end stuff. Sure, sure. And honestly, I don't care what your diet restrictions might be. And not, I shouldn't say restrictions. Let's say you're, you're trying to cut down on carbs. You can find that in Mexican restaurants. Yep. You know what I mean? If you just want filling stuff, like I feel like Mexican food is very versatile and, and can help out a lot of people. But a lot of people, Mike. When they're eating Mexican food, what do they drink? Margaritas. Damn right. When's the last time you had a margarita? It's been a long time. Two weeks ago. I don't really drink a ton of them. Yeah. Was it just a straight margarita or did you have a flavored one? We had a, uh, a listener of ours who uh, who brought in a bunch of different mixing uh, products. Oh, that's right. Including the salt rim stuff. And oh, everything that's right, else. yeah. So I had uh, two bottles of margarita mix, and I had a bottle of tequila, and uh, and I hooked it up. Good work. Yep. So yep. today is National Margarita Day. Uh, let's see. A poll found that 76% of Americans, they like margaritas. Yeah. Only 7% uh, have a full-on hatred for them. All right. Okay. The margarita is funny as well. Like, it goes through all different groups and backgrounds. You know what I mean? I mean, if the mood hits you, any group of people will drink margaritas. Yeah. Right? Rich, poor, black, white, Asian, doesn't matter. Like, if you're in that good frame of mind, it's like, let's get Margaritas. And that's the big thing, is that it's a good frame of mind. You don't see anybody just saddled up at a bar having a bad day, drinking their feelings away in a margarita. Right, the guy sitting also, in the corner not talking, it is not a margarita. Correct. Frame. And, look, right, I'm 43. So, taking some of my friends out of it, I feel like at my age, if I call somebody and go, you want to go get day drunk? And it's like noon, they're like, ah, I got stuff to do. I'm like, hey, you want to pop out for a couple margs? They'll be there. Sure. Damn right. <laughs> right? It sounds yeah, like a yeah, party. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Margaritas are the third most ordered cocktail worldwide. Uh, really? That's, yep. Wow. That's according to Bacardi's uh, global survey. The top five are gin and tonic, mojito, margarita, Bloody Mary, uh, whiskey and Coke. Okay. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, is it Jack and Coke? Okay. If you're, <laughs> down, if you're down in DuPont, there's a place called Viva Mexico. And nice. go talk to William. And he's got 9 million margarita recipes. Anything you want. They got the big slushy machines right. in the back. 
And I mean, the menu for margaritas is it's crazy. Different kinds of salt, yep, different kinds yep. of flavors, all that stuff. Go down there and get a margarita. Sit at the bar. I'm telling you, they are addictive. You, I might go get one tonight. It's a good call. I just prefer a strawberry margarita. They have them. That's I don't what I'm saying. Right. Like, I don't mind your, your your regular you know lime margarita, but for me, it's always strawberry. I like that little hint of sweet in there. Yeah, and I feel like. The regular margarita and the strawberry margarita are the two most you see the most out there. Sure, I agree. Uh, Sixty-seven percent of us prefer a frozen margarita, mm-hmm. but three percent of Americans they don't think that's really a margarita, and they'll judge you for it. You guys go frozen or on the rocks? I just go on the rocks. If I get one, I'm going on. Well, it depends on the restaurant. Most most restaurants don't have frozen, so if they have frozen, I'm going to go frozen every time. But obviously, if they don't, I feel like go most Mexican rocks. joints have frozen margaritas. It depends. Yeah. Yeah. Like the ones in Fremont, there's one that does, there's two that do not. And you have those half gluten joints. <laughs> Red stars. <yeah. laughs> I, I just drink too fast for the frosted ones. My issue is honestly anything, whether it's a daiquiri or a frozen margarita, I just get bored. Right? We did it once. At yeah, Las I remember Vegas. long to drink. The, you mean? Well, like Mike and I got all fired up and they have these giant ones. Big ones, yeah. And Mike was, and finally I went, can you drink the rest of mine? I'm just going to order a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like, I don't know, margaritas to me, frozen margaritas are like Bloody Marys. Like, I'll, I can drink one and then I'm like, I, like I'm, I'm just bored drinking this. Yeah, yeah. yeah and like, I, I don't know, I'm not big into my frozen slushy drinks. Uh, what do you think is the top food that's ordered with a frozen margarita? Now, Think outside the box of a Mexican restaurant. Think more of people having a good time, maybe sitting on a deck. Is it something hot? It is. It is something hot. My first thought nachos? was nachos. Yeah. Right? Nope. Or, or like churros. You think, uh, you're, I said don't think Mexican food. Right. Uh, Cheeseburgers. What? Yep. Very Jimmy Buffettish. You want some cheese? That's what I'm saying. Jimmy Burgers oh and Paris. Cheeseburgers nice. are the top food we're likely to order with a frozen margarita. Now, people that are drinking them on the rocks, you're probably having something else. But okay. like, I'm just picturing people like sitting on a deck in the summertime and like sure. frozen margarita and a burger. Fifteen <laughs> percent uh, of us. I'm kind of one of these people. Basically, only drink them on vacation. That's about the only yeah. time you see me drinking one. Uh, Two thirds of us like a salted rim. Twenty six percent of us will lick it before each sip. Do you guys lick the salt? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I kind of form an opening, and then I work my way drinking mm-hmm. through that opening in the glass. I like to lick the salt, but also I like to lick every glass <laughs> and stare at the bartender before I take a sip. <laughs> Sir, that's not your drink. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. I got thrown out of a bar last week. <laughs> These are some of the best margarita mixes you could buy. Uh, Trace agaves, organic. Uh, some of the others they say have too much. Uh, let's see. And then USA Today did a roundup of the best ma- best margarita day deals. And uh, you can get $5 margs up at Dave and Buster's. And, of course, Chili's. Yeah. Of All course, right. yeah. Yeah, get that Cadillac. Okay. Thank you, Head Chef. We appreciate it. Shot of the day, speaking of, is uh, coming up. You are listening to The Men's Room. Maximize the compensation for your injury claim with Phillips Law Firm. With over 80 years of combined legal experience, they won't allow the insurance companies to dictate what's good enough for you. Whether it's an auto accident or workplace injury, contact Phillips Law Firm today. If they don't win, you don't pay. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out. Yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. Meet the New Balance Fuel Cell 4040 V7. The choice of elite ball players like Michael Harris. Engineered for responsiveness and agility. This versatile option is built for speed demons who demand peak performance. With fuel cell foam underfoot and a synthetic mesh upper. Experience unparalleled breathability, comfort, and a secure fit as you round the bases. The nitrogen-infused fuel cell midsole propels you forward with every step, ensuring you stay ahead of the game. Learn more and purchase the 4040 at newbalance.com. This spring, break away and visit Fort Collins, Colorado. Seeking a culinary escape? Local restaurants offer exclusive specials during great plates of downtown Fort Collins. Love live music? Foco MX is a two-day festival with hundreds of Colorado artists. Eager to be entertained? The Lincoln Center hosts comedian Mike Birbiglia and an evening with John Cusack. Plan your travels at visitfortcollins.com. Fort Collins, where adventure casual is a way of life. 
99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All right, check out the Men's. We'll drink a toast for the shot of the day. And we do have your headlines on the way at 550. But first, quick check on Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. Thank you, Miles. After 1,000 years, 1,000 years, Japan's Naked Man Festival has finally come to an end. That's a really long festival, man. It's <laughs> one that they celebrated annually, and they were like, yeah, every, everybody who was taking part in it, they're kind of getting old and aging out, and there's there's not many successors. Well, I think, so... They're still doing a naked festival. They just now included women. Correct. Which will probably bring more people in. Correct. Yes. As in more men. Yes. Uh-huh. A new bill in Kentucky has put a cap on the number of vintage bourbons someone can sell within a year. Huh. Why? I don't know. Like, what difference does it make? To, you're trying to sell product, right? right? I have a business. I just want to sell my product. I make Tide. Right. And one person comes in and buys every bottle of Tide I have in Safeway. I don't care. The right. money is the same. That's the point of having a business. I don't remember the, the reasoning that they used for it, but it was... Probably because they sell it again later on the secondary market. I mean, the problem is much. some of those liquors don't even cost that much, but there's there's people that just buy all the... Right, all it's the like inventory. Tickets, so it's kind of like, all right. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I can, I can fathom putting some regulations where it's like, you know, to kind of stop that. Isn't it kind of the same thing as like the Pappy Van Winkle where if like Miles, because you were actually on one of those wait lists and the I price, it, yeah. and the price isn't exactly. I won the, I won the lottery at, uh, at BevMo. Right. So I got a bottle of it and it gifted it to my dad on his 70th. Right. And usually uh, those things can go for also, thousands of dollars, uh, but I feel like it, the face price was not near as much. I think no. it's all the market. You, you could have like a, you could have a, I don't know, 17 year or something like that, whatever the number is. Mm-hmm. And, and all the batches are still different. So some of those are better than others. It's just like wine. But you some, don't some, know. Some, some right. year, but they, but they know. So like, you know, some wine companies, they, they're 2016. It's the same crap they made in 2020, but the 2016 has a much different flavor, you know. Because right. it didn't rain as much. Or whatever, whatever the deal right. is. Exactly. Yeah. And some of it now, like the, people are putting down down payments on new stuff. Because you got to keep in mind, Pappy looks old. It is not. Mm-hmm. Right. They didn't start coming out until the 2000s. So, like, people now are starting, they're like, well, we're doing this and that. And people will put deposits down to get a bottle of whatever this stuff is, banking on the fact it'll taste good. Damn. You can hear the stain of my voice. <laughs> Seriously. It's like, God damn it. Come on, man. I just want to take a sip. Right? VD. <laughs> Authorities in Florida are about to put limitations on the holes that people dig in the sand on beaches. That's is probably a pretty good the, idea. Uh, was it in Florida? The yeah, little girl. Yeah, okay, yes, yeah. and her brother. That's the, you know, and, and I feel like it became kind of a fad overnight. It was a, it was an online thing to where you would just people would go to the beach and then they would start digging these massive holes, and it was just kind of funny that they would just dig these big old holes. Well, then people started falling into one for one thing, you and know, it's sand and whatnot, right? And then there's other situations like we just had where a tragedy happened where. Kids were inside of the doggone thing. Maybe they were digging a different hole or a tunnel or something like that, and the doggone thing collapsed. Yep, right. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a fad. I mean, I went to the beach my whole life. There was always at least one day where there was a group of teenage or like young twenty dudes that were digging a massive hole, just digging. So like, I get that tragedy just happened, but I don't know. That is kind of weird to me. That's part of like going being to the, the beach, beach yeah. culture. All right. Well, there you go. Beach okay. culture. I mean, you guys remember that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Like you would see, and it was always like, "Holy cow, there's water down there!" <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Seriously, as a kid, I was like, "That's awesome." Now, with that said, oh, you my just mom dig until you found water. Yeah, like the, the, those ones you're talking about. Yeah. Like they, they weren't. I don't remember them being that uncommon. Now, my mom would never let me play in them. Sure, right? Because you that know, it has a lot to but do. But there with was, it. I don't know, just kind of what younger athletic dudes did. You. Dig giant hole. Oh, dig it. Yeah, I think yeah. it's probably just the safe alternative to not do it. It's like we grew up, right. no bicycle helmets. Now right. everyone wears one. No seatbelts. Now mm-hmm. everyone wears one. It's right. just like one of those things where eventually you go like, is this worth the cost of sure. what right. happens? Exactly. Miles, I know that you, I know that you're observing today. It's uh, it's Scouts Founders Day. Is that right? I knew that you had mar- ed- ed- your uh, your calendar marked there, and I decided that uh, since you and I have gone through the Scouts, there's a, there's a handful of different merit badges that do, do make people kind of scoff. Because they're not exactly... You don't say. They just said there's, what, like 103 or something like that? The, the total number you could get? like that. I don't fully remember just how many badges there are. And ironically enough, they're in court today. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But you know what? I decided to find some of the weird ones. The Men's Room Top 10. The Men's Room Top 10. 10 of the rarest, strangest, and most obscure merit badges and scouts. 
There is very little known about one of the more obscure merit badges in existence. For example, what benefit does this merit badge provide for the scout who achieves this recognition? Does it involve eating or merely observing under careful scrutiny? There may be only one person with such knowledge. Miles Montgomery. Sure. The badge in question. The Rusty Sheriff's badge. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one that sucked the most for you? What badge? Oh, that sucked the most. I will go back to the citizenship badges. I okay. got those all at the same time because we had a we had a camp that offered all three of them. They are all three Eagle required, and they're a snooze fest. <laughs> uh, what? what badge? The, their citizenship in the community, citizenship in the, country, in the nation, and citizenship world. in the world. All right. Uh, mine was just the Paul Bunyan Award. Not actually a merit badge. Right. But what you had to do is you had to take a tree over 20 to 25 feet. Mm -hmm. You had to cut it down with an axe. You had to then cord and split it. For that badge, it took me six and a half hours to take this God. tree down, and you have to do it all with an axe. Right. So basically, you're just like, just you're sore. Right. For nothing. God. And just, you're cutting down a tree for no card. reason in the middle of the woods. Like, why? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So these are the rarest. I, I went to one meeting and they were like, we're going camping. And I was like, intense. And they were like, yes, intense. I remember my dad picked me up. He's like, I'm not going back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. We're done. We're out. Uh, so these are the rarest, strangest, and most obscure badges. Most of them are still in circulation. Not all of them, though. All right. So, uh, we have inventing. Inventing the inventing merit badge. So basically, I respect that. Says in your the, the the requirements are as such, and you do in your own words define inventing, and then uh, you need to do one of the following: either identify an interview with a buddy, uh, an individual in your community who has invented a useful item. Okay. Read about three inventors. Uh, you can define the term intellectual property or explain the components of a patent. So this is there's, okay. I there's got you. Nine right. different requirements that you have to go through in order to get this badge. Okay. Inventing. You have stamp collecting. Jesus, come on. Which <laughs> is still in circulation today. I almost went out with that one because I did coin collecting. So I was looking That's at another the, merit badge. That is another merit badge. Mm -hmm. Like what? I don't feel like you should get a badge for your hobby. Ah, you know what I mean? That's, that's part of what it is, too, is also that's like they got some little hobby badges. All right. Okay. I mean, do they have they updated them? Like, can Thrill Sun get a badge for playing War of Warcraft or like, I don't know what a he, certain level I don't know what he plays Fortnite, Fortnite. So. there is a computer's merit badge uh, close right game design ooh alright so they do have that alright you know, they, 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 they got some other things in there stamp collecting basically you need to uh, dis discuss how you can better understand people places institutions as a result of collecting stamps which well, you learn yeah. that certain countries have queens or kings or whoever's on the sure. stamps where, you know, we have Elvis. Define topical stamp collecting. Let's see. Show at least a perforated or uh, an imperforate stamp, mint and used stamps, sheet, booklet, and coil stamps. Good God. <laughs> a lot of stamp work. <laughs> a lot of stamp work. Again, these are the <laughs> rarest, strangest, and most obscure you badges. Know, I have some friends that collect stamps, too, Mike. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I see him in the festivals. <laughs> I think his name is Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Those tiny ones. I collect stamps because I don't ever use them. One that I wanted to do, but couldn't find anybody to do it, was bugling. There is a bugling merit badge. <laughs> Wait, you couldn't find somebody who wanted to partner with you help for out. bugling? Why do you need somebody else to help uh, you? You need a you certified merit badge counselor in order to, uh, to do these things. Oh, you, I see. Well, you don't need like a bugle buddy. Correct. But also, if you go to any camps, there's revelry in the morning, and there is when the flag comes down at night. So somebody's yeah. got to go up there and do that. So there's only six uh, requirements to this one. you got to explain and demonstrate how the bugle makes sound. you got to compose a bugle, call for your troop, and then you have to sound ten of the following bugle calls. First call, reveille, assembly, mess, drill, fatigue, officers, recall, church, swimming, fire, retreat, two of the colors, call to quarters, and taps. Uh, you got to explain each of the calls that you performed, explain how to care for, clean, and maintain a bugle, and serve as a bugler in your troop for three months. I'm no, guessing that whoever badge. came up with that merit badge was real obsessed with their ability to play <laughs> bugle. Well, also, you also, you're part of the guard. You need to learn how to fold a flag. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's there's, there's more to There's it. a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I learned how to fold a flag as a kid because, like, it was like for a month of the year, you and another classmate were in charge of the putting up the flag. And, and you know what you do with that yeah. knowledge, Ted? 
What? You make the best paper football in your class. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the surveying merit badge. All right. Also known as the peeping Tom. Oh, we got to show that you know first aid for the types of injuries that could occur while surveying. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, from the field notes gathered uh, uh, for for an earlier requirement, you have to use a protractor and a scale, plot the points that you measured, and draw a scale map of your survey. That's fair. You got to uh, use one of the corner markers from requirement two as a benchmark and an uh, assumed elevation of 100 feet. So it's basically... Your show, survey. Right. Show that you know how to dog on survey. It's something you can do for the rest of your life, though, if you're interested. Exactly. And that's kind of the good thing about some of these badges is that it does... Help further, hopefully, some interest that you might have that you might sure, take, it, take sure. it somewhere else. That's, it's one of the first times in life that you have the opportunity to have an elective yes. that you could actually enjoy compared mm-hmm. to school, which just says, "Here, you need to learn this." Right. I'm going to bring that guy up. Okay. Hey, getting your Pierre Lafont on, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Google it. No, no, no. He did DC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I grew up knowing that. You got. Uh, <laughs> I got these are the rarest, strangest, and most obscure badges. You have the drafting merit badge. Oh, all right, getting a little racing. Yeah, uh, saving some gas. Format two sheets of drawing paper and proper <laughs> oh. borders with uh, with title blocks. Uh, make a rough sketch of your project drawings. Use either single stroke, vertical, or slant gothic lettering. Using a formatted sheet of paper that you prepared for your mother pr- project, uh, produce a pencil drawing as it would be used for manufacturing. Just drafting up a, a um, drawing there. Is that also like having good handwriting? Uh, that's think, calligraphy. I'm about to say that's more calligraphy. Go on, Ted. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just, I know one person is a man. I feel like women generally have better handwriting. Yes. But I have one buddy. It's it's beautiful. Nice. <laughs> you got uh, nuclear science. Oh, damn. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Explain radiation, the difference between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Explain the ALARA principle and the measures are required by law to minimize these risks. Describe the radiation hazard symbol and explain where it should be used. Blah, 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 blah. I'm radioactive stuff. There used to be a science uh, project kit that you could buy that actually had uranium in it so you could do those experiments. No kidding. It was like in the 50s. It was like, hey, kids. But that badge came out. Yeah, right after World War II, right? You got in the Cold War with the Soviet Union. So everything... Think how things different things are now. So at mm-hmm. that point, intellectual stimulation was a thing you wanted on kids. Right. It's right. about teaching kids science, teaching kids math, because you wanted to, to and, outpace and, the Soviet Union. What they did not consider is, even though it's a toy for kids to do radioactive stuff at home, it's literally radioactive. But the badge, yeah. the badge was basically an atom with electrons circling yeah. around yeah. it and had all the you know, tracers and stuff. Absolutely. Uh, one that I could not find requirements for, so I think I, I think it's out of uh, out of circulation. I, uh, consumer buying is on there. <laughs> Some of the honorable mentions that they have is the strangest discontinued merit badges. You have nut culture. Oh, my God. (laughs) Taught scouts how to grow and care for nut trees. Uh, Master at arms. All right. All right. Uh, That makes sense. Taxidermy. Ooh. Yeah. Did you guys know any taxidermy kids? No. No. (laughs) Not even in Edom Club. You'd think that somebody out there in Edom Club would be Yeah, Miles was in West Virginia. I figured between the two of you. Nope. Nothing. I think that's a strange kid. Sorry, uh, taxidermy adult. You <laughs> basically just ate everything you got, but you didn't. Uh, rabbit raising. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. That comes in very handy. And That also I- sounds like a term I'm going to start using. I'm going to go out uh, rabbit racing. <laughs> and then hog and pork production. Okay. Oh, lovely. Actually, that would be, I mean, hey, that would be wrong with any kind of pork product. But then I'm going to give you guys the last one of these obscure merit badges, and I'm going to see how well we do because we do, in fact, have... A radio merit badge. All what right. do you do for your radio merit badge? So you have to explain what radio is and then discuss the following. The differences between broadcast radio and hobby radio. The differences between broadcasting and two-way communications. Mm-hmm. Shortwave. Radio station call signs and how they are used in broadcast radio and amateur radio. Uh, the phonetic alphabet and how it's used to communicate clearly. All right. And then you have to do the following. you got to have to sketch a diagram showing how radio waves travel locally yep. and around the world. That, that, I think that's the most interesting part of that as far as in the atmosphere, sure. where those waves, what the height is, where they're at, and all those things. Uh, explain how the radio stations WWV and WWVH can uh, be used to help determine what you can expect to hear when you listen mm-hmm. to a shortwave radio. Explain the difference between distant uh, uh, and local station. Discuss uh, what a Federal Communications Commission uh, commission does and how it is different from the International Telecommunications Union. Not that you care, but it explains why when you drive under a bridge and you're listening to AM radio, the signal goes It goes dead. Okay. Uh, Find out about three career opportunities in radio. You got to visit a radio installation. Explain the safety precautions of working uh, with radio gear. I'm, in, I'm all in on this. You bet. This is that time I'm interested. You know what? We should find a way to do that. We should, like... Yeah, we'll fail it, but we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can come up with a Let's requirement. see if we can get a... You guys can go back to uh, scouting? Yeah. yeah. See if we can get the radio merit badge.
I'm in. I want to try it. A man in Massachusetts was arrested for illegal drugs and weapons in his possession, but you'll never believe just how powerful of a weapon that he had, Miles. What, uh, what weapon did he have there in his Give car? you all the details at 550. Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming up at 550. In the meantime, let's get a contest on the line for Profile This at 206-803-ROCK. In the meantime, have we made it to Dragon Time? Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in, where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win, you don't pay. Phillips Law Firm, justice for you. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger For the ones who get it done. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in, where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win, you don't pay. Phillips Law Firm, justice for you. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith from the Men's Room. And did you know I have a podcast? Well, I do. The Podcast. New episodes uploaded every Wednesday on the Odyssey app. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is. As usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve at Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. And today, we toast an anonymous 20-year-old woman from somewhere here in the U.S. We don't know her. Now, her honoree gave birth to a healthy and beautiful baby girl just last month. Now, she wanted her daughter's name to pay tribute to her grandparents. Well, grandpa's name is Harvey. I actually like that name. And her grandmother's name is Charlotte, also like that name. So, new mama, she combined their names and decided to name her daughter Harlot. In oh, case you do not know, no. Harlot is an actual word, and also that actual word, it means prostitute. Yeah. I know you know that. Uh, well, seems that her honoree, unaware of this unfortunate connection, but upon finding out, she still wants to ruin the kid's life, and she wants to keep the name. Now, for what it's worth, her husband definitely disagrees and is petitioning for the name to be changed. He's actually going to a legal petition. So they're probably not going to be married for very long. I wouldn't think so, but in this case, I have to side that with sucks him. because you have a newborn. Like, look. The fight over the name? You named... You, there's no fight. You named your daughter a prostitute. Not after a prostitute. Right. You named her prostitute. Hooker, yeah, I mean, she never, whore, right. whole bag, call girl, whatever yeah, it is you want to call her. Yeah. Right? Or exactly. like it's in the Bible, I think. It, it, that is where it originates. So he's yeah. kind of like, look, man, it's not that it doesn't sound like a great name. 
It's just that it literally and only means prostitute. It is our baby girl. I would rather her not go through that. Mom's <laughs> just like, nah. Change it to Harlow. She can do anything. Har- Harlow's a real name. Right. Just get rid of one. But not Harlow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe they're rap fans. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So we pour this booze, and we drink this booze, because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. Hey, Stephen Throw Hill, could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Jack. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. All right, Jack, you understand how this here game is played? Yes, sir. Fantastic. You have your choice of one of three stories. And today, we have for you, bite me. In other words, what did somebody find in their food? Hit me with your best shot, where you guess the unconventional weapon that someone chose to use as a weapon. And finally, animalize this, where you guess the animal responsible for causing the problem. All right, we're going to do uh, hit me with your best shot. Here is your story. We go to Minneapolis, where Minneapolis police, they're asking for the public's help, finding the man who was struck in the head that was captured in a viral video. Now, officers say they identified the suspect involved in the aggravated assault, but no one, no 911 calls were made after the incident, and the victim never came forward. Now, in the video, two men are seen outside of the CC Club in Minneapolis on this particular night. One man is smoking as the other man warns him he's going to strike him with something if he says the N-word. Well, naturally, the smoking man, he decides to utter the N-word anyway, and that's when the man made good on his promise, took his weapon, reared back, and hits him in the face with it, knocking the guy to the ground. Yes, I'm smiling as I read this. It brings me pleasure. But the man with the weapon then stands over him and says, quote, you can't say the N-word, my boy. End of story. Now, because this is all on video, but nobody came forward to, to file a complaint or anything. So the question is, what did the racist dude get hit in the face with? Was he hit with a trash can lid? Was he hit with a trash can? Was he hit with a skateboard? Or was he hit with a velvet rope post? So trash can lid, trash can, skateboard, or the velvet velvet rope post? You know, Mike, the brass I was really hoping you were going to say brass knuckles, but... Like no, because that's a conventional no. weapon. I mean, if someone has brass knuckles, they want to yeah. punch you. Yeah. It's one of those stands. Yeah, you're talking about. Um, yeah the stand well, they put the velvet rope. Outside of a club, huh? Mm-hmm. Outside of the CC <laughs> club, yeah. Yeah, let's go velvet rope post, huh? Jack, I'm joining you, man. That's exactly what I think, too. Yeah, that was yeah, my I first my thought. Ass. We're all going uh, velvet rope post? Well, just because they're outside a yeah. club. so Correct. Like, yeah. Every club's going to have those. You know what, Miles? Put me down for the trash can lid. Trash can lid. Ooh. <laughs> and how wrong... Hit. And this guy says it twice, and then the dude hits him. He said, man, don't say it. Guy's like, blah, blah, blah. Pow! Not to say it. Okay. Can't say it. <laughs> Was it a trash can lid, a trash can, a skateboard, or a velvet rope post? We're going to find out next. That was a tease. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photo bombers. Zoom, crop out, yada yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T-Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T-Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger For the ones who get it done. Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in, where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. 
Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win, you don't pay. Phillips Law Firm, justice for you. 99.9 KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Category hit me with your best shot on profile. This we got a guy in uh, Minneapolis. Police are actually looking for the guy. He was struck in the head. The reason, face, because he uh, he dropped an N-bomb on someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, that guy never came forward to press charges. But they were looking for him. And uh, based on what he said, I probably deserved it. Question is, what was he hit outside a club with? Trash can lid, trash can, a skateboard, or a velvet rope post? Yes, indeed. And that's a question that we posed to you, Jack. But everyone got in on this. Let us start with Mike Hawk. You, you went with the trash can lid. I want like Captain America style. It was not the trash can lid. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jack, you agree with both Miles and the Ted Smith. All of you went with the velvet rope post because let's face it, makes sense. They're outside of a club. Yep. No, you're kidding me. It was not the velvet. Oh, rope post. was it the whole trash can? It was a skateboard. Oh, damn. Yeah, brother, hit him in the face with a skateboard. And that's why I told him, like, if you say it again, I'm going to hit you with the skateboard in my hand. The guy said it again, and brother ain't alive, so he hit him in the face with the skateboard. Damn. One punch yeah. rule, man. I'm yeah. telling man's like, I just told you I would well, do this. That's I, why I said that. I was going to say, that's, that's the worst thing. It's the guy's like, hey, this is your warning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll just say it again. Yep. And then. <laughs> Wasn't that the same thing with the Twisted T encounter, too? Yeah. yeah. Told when him, like, he first started off. reading this, I was like, that's a nightclub. But what the- is the Twisted T encounter? The Twisted T one is awesome. Gosh, it's that? like a like a convenience store. All right. And there is a, a white gentleman, we'll say, and he keeps, like, when he's talking, he's dropping the N-bomb with an A on it. Okay. So the big brother, you know, brother next to it's like, st- the people are like, stop saying it. And he's like, no, man, come on. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And the dude has a can, a 24-ounce can of Twisted T. <laughs> and just boom. Oh, yeah. You've mm-hmm. seen it. Yeah. I'm looking for it. I think my favorite was, uh, I did not go with Miles to the 7-Eleven on this day, but man, he comes back and goes, look, man. I'm in 7-Eleven. I'm waiting in line. And the black dude walks in, looks me directly in the eye. You were in front of me. What's up there? Oh, yeah. What's up, Ben Bomb? Miles is like, I don't know how to respond to that. Hey, how are you, sir? (laughs) Good day. (laughs) Now for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Ted. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the men's room presents TV Time with Ted. All right, I guess this is kind of breaking news in the TV world. It's also kind of not. But Jimmy Kimmel was kind of hinting that uh, he might leave the late night uh, show as as a host. But this is why I'm like, I guess it's breaking news. As he says, I, I think this is my final contract. I hate to even say it because everyone's laughing at me now each time I think. And then it turns out to be not the case. Uh, I still have a little more than two years left of my contract. That seems pretty good. That seems like enough. So that's what I'm saying. I guess it's breaking news. We still got over two years left in this country. It's like Tom Brady retiring. Tom Brady, Brady, like, unretired. This one right. seems more like LeBron. Right? LeBron's kind of hinting at it, but I think LeBron also wants his last season to be a last season. So, you know, you can kind of right. have that. Do the tour, so Do to speak. that victory yeah. tour. Plus, I think he's hoping one day to maybe play in, in, a, in a game where his son's on the other team or on his team. That'd be kind of cool. That's right. So, like, Kibble, yes. Big news in the TV world, and we'll see what happens. Two and a half, to her, a little over two years from now. Uh, yeah, and also, I mean, it's just going to be hard to do. I mean, look, Letterman took forever to leave, mm-hmm. and now he still does interview shows. Uh, what, what's it on uh, Netflix? My next guest will be right. Or, so, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of. I don't think he disappears. You just don't have whatever restriction. You get a little breathing room. I like what I do. I just want to do it on my terms. Well, that's mm-hmm. one thing I always liked about Carson. Like, Johnny Carson, you know, people forget. Like, I mean, that was the mainstay. You know, like, when I was a kid, I mean, Johnny Carson was everything. And CBS always tried to, like, they had different versions of shows right. with it different did. hosts. But Johnny Carson was late night TV. And then pretty much once he was done, you just didn't see him. Right. Which I love. I'm like, all right, let's do it. It's like I always tell people about leaving the city. You know, people like sometimes people go, "You ever see yourself living in the country?" I said, "Here's the problem. If I ever did, I'm not, I'm not coming back. So your boy, your boy's gone." So I told my wife about retirement. I'm like, "Look, we can live out in the cut if you want, but I will never be in the city again, or we'll stay in the city and I won't see the cut again. I don't know." Yeah. Uh, let's stick a little bit with uh, late night host though, uh, Jay Leno. 
There's another one. He retired, unretired, mm. took Conan's job. He's still doing some stuff out there, but uh, it's kind of strange. So basically, they're just saying, like, you ever been attracted? You guys ever been attracted to people for a certain reason? You can't put your finger on it? Sure. I mean, right? I like, think it's inevitable. I mean, I want to put my finger on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went through an odd phase where I dated, like, three girls named Molly, like, in a row. That is weird. Yeah. I dated a couple of Amandas in a row, too. Well, went out with one. Sometimes I date Molly Moon at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> nice. Nice. So Jay Leno has a habit of falling in love with women who are born on September 5th. That's this includes his wife. Uh, in a 2016 interview, Jay said, quote, I've lived with five women and every one of them was born on the same day. I can, I can look at a woman and go, September 5th. That is odd. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't look for women who are born on September 5th. I just wind up attracted to them. Uh, he said when he first met his wife, he asked her if she was, quote, born on or around September 5th, which she said it was, that's her birthday. All he could do was laugh. That is weird, man. That's pretty specific. That's kind of the closest that I've ever seen of like astrology being almost concrete. Like, right. a, he's attracted to people that were born on this specific day. There's got to be some correlation that's like pulling him towards it. I think it's just that he's weird. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like he's like asking people what their what their birth date is and then finding out like, oh, are you September fifth? It's one of those. Yeah, you find yeah out I mean, like you're, you're get- attracted to the personality that is born on that day. I get looks in like a certain type, sure. but of like the three like. Serious girlfriends have had like, yeah. One's birthday was like in the fall. One was in the winter, and one was like Cinco de Mayo. So like, I don't know that the dates really matter to me. Which also easy birthday to remember. Cinco de Mayo, yeah. correct? Oh yeah, and yours. Yeah, Christmas Eve's pretty easy. Actually, I get to uh, every four years get to wish my buddy a happy uh, February 29th birthday. Uh, this Even year, the, yeah. Even the woman that wrote uh, the comic strip, Kathy. He said he found himself attracted to her So he, when she was on the show. So he literally was like, hey, when's your birthday? And she's like, September 5th. You got to be kidding. No way. Yeah. Oh, but man, for some reason on dates, I'm better off with even numbers than odd. I don't know what it is. If your birthday is on the 19th, I'll never remember it. But if your birthday is on the 20th, I got it. I, huh. the 18th, I got it. For some reason, 17, 13, there's just numbers that I have a hard time. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Um, relating to. Are you the 17th? I'm the 22nd. See, I can't, well, I should remember that because it's an easy See, number. the 17th would be uh, St. Patty's Day. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just bad knowing other friends' birthdays if it doesn't mm-hmm. stick out. Or is on Facebook, which I don't have. Right. So don't Facebook is much easier. But <laughs> yes. I, I mean, hell, I did it to somebody a couple weeks ago. Like, some, And I go, oh, crap, man. Did I miss your birthday? Oh, it was my buddy Phil. Something. He goes, let's try some of this tequila. I got it for my birthday. And I'm like, bro, did I miss your birthday? He's like, no, it's in July. Like, oh, all right. <laughs> like, I'm just not sure. You could ask. I-, I bet at least once a week I ask Mike either how old he is again or when his birthday is. I'm very close to yours, Ted. Right. <laughs> I mean, we missed our boy VD's birthday. That was uh, last Friday. Last Friday, yeah. Yeah, because we weren't here. Mm-hmm. But I saw him on Saturday. Okay. Said happy birthday to him. I didn't, and I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not his birthday anymore. Uh, let's see. So uh, they put together a list of the 75 most impactful TV moments. Ooh, okay. So I have for you the top 10. Do you guys want to guess some? I'm going to guess the final episode of MASH. Okay. The series finale of MASH. Goodbye, farewell, and amen. Oh, if you just good night. Oh. I don't say then uh, the, the, the final episode of Seinfeld. If we're doing final episodes. Ah, but impactful. No. Yeah. So some of these are yeah, events. Okay. Some of these are shows. Throw was right just because MASH, that was such a massive deal. It was huge. And you only have three networks, so are like we talking everyone like, tuned are in. Are we talking like the Challenger or like shows? Are news events? So there's both. Okay. Challenger? Uh, Challenger does not make that on there, but number 10 on the list. These are the uh, 75 most uh, impactful TV moments. They said George Carlin hosting the series premiere of Saturday Night Live. Ah, okay. Have you ever seen yeah, that? that is- I don't know that I've... I mean, I've seen, like, footage of it. It's right. weird. It's not anywhere... It's just weird to watch SNL where you don't have the same kind of... You have the same format structure, but not really. He came out and did, like, 15 minutes of stand-up. And then, like, the man was a marching band or something like it that. Was, uh, it was... Yeah. It was different. It's still, it's still good. It's just that it's not a format you recognize. Was uh, there something to do with the moon landing or oh, uh, any of the Apollo missions or something like that? 
Uh, so number one on the list, 1969, Apollo 11 landed on the on the okay. moon. Yep. So that's the number one most impactful moment, or at least that's what they want us to believe. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's why they got the fake birds. That's right. Where's the stars? Uh, yeah, that's obviously number one. Let's see what else is on there. Luke Epis- and Laura's wedding, episode. Uh, 1065 of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, where Mr. Rogers invites Officer Clemens, who was black, to share a waiting pool on a hot day. That aired in 1969. If you don't know, segregation, black mm-hmm. people couldn't go in the same pools. Even there was beaches in Maryland where black people couldn't even go to that, the same This beach. cannot be true because we are told that racism has never existed in this country. So I don't know where you're getting your crap from. I don't know either. It's wild. Uh, next on the list, you have uh, Martin Luther King delivering his iconic I Have a Dream speech mm-hmm. at the Again, March of Washington in 1963. Racism's never existed, so I don't know what he was babbling on about. Mm-hmm. He's talking about his dreams, I think. Yeah, like you know, whatever. You know, Sleepy you know, like fella. you're falling off Because it's never existed here, right? So, I mean, I don't know why he didn't care what he's talking about. Uh, also, in 1963... Uh, this is one my parents always talk about it. They're like, you never forget where you were when this Kennedy. Came. Correct. Walter yeah. Conkright announcing the pres- uh, the death of President John F. Kennedy. Uh, that was in November of 63. These are our uh, most impactful TV moments. So not like our favorites or whatever. It's just like right. impact. Yeah. Uh, someone has a good suggestion here, and I remember it. I hated it, but uh, on 9-11, watching the Twin Towers. Fall. So unfortunately, that's number two. Yeah, yeah and I think yeah. for us, our generations, not just mine, like everybody in this room, like I'll, they, I mean, I can feel that chill in my spine right now, sitting in my mom's apartment in Aspen Hill. And yeah. you watch those times, especially because it was still so confusing. But we're like when the second plane hits and then when they collapse, it's just like, oh, man. I never seen anything well, like it. That was it's not what like, I, I, I was freaked out watching that. But the thing I was freaked out about was like, by the way, guys, there's one headed our way. So right, exactly. After both of those got hit, there's two actually on the way. One, uh, unfortunately, had a wing malfunction and went down in Pennsylvania. Um, <clears> the <throat> other one hit the Pentagon. So we were right. also <laughs> looking at the EAS in the morning trying to figure out when is this thing going to go off because they were, they kept making these announcements on television that this was going down. You're like, Jesus, then the Pentagon gets And then the world literally turned to crap after. Right. Yeah. How about this and one? there was a lot of, like, look, like I was working at the AFL-CIO, right? Like my mom was downtown. There was also a lot of crazy stuff happening and you and we know this now especially with the internet but i remember i remember news stations in dc being like there was a bombing at the state department and they're like uh no they're like so so much missing you know who ended up spearheading most of the information that ended up being correct and it sounds crazy but at that time everyone not everyone hated howard stern but you know he was still the bad guy blah 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 so 9 11 happens and like ted said a lot of these major news networks are having a hard time getting in there to actually see what's going on for obvious reasons Basically, Howard Stern and Robin Quivers, they started becoming the de facto mm-hmm. informant. So you'd hear like CNN and Fox News saying stuff like, it's been confirmed by Howard Stern. And it was just, it's such a mind F where you're like. Confirmed by Howard Stern. Right, and they were yeah. dead serious about this. No, 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 he was right. the only person who was doing his job to really, truly just get the right information out and there. Oh, what about Janda Jackson's boob at halftime? Now. Uh, all right. So now, also on the list, you have the premiere episode of the miniseries Roots. Yep. I remember that. And then last on the list uh, was the Beatles' performance oh, on the Ed Sullivan Ed show. Sullivan, okay. yeah. Have a great time. Mike, you ever seen Roots? No. no. Yeah. Do you, you guys watch, watch it as a Christmas mm-hmm. special in your home? <laughs> now, I remember when it, uh, I remember when when it I debuted. Man. We watched yes. it like watched every, it every year. year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we You watched it in school. Definitely was on in the Hill household. It was much better than the Thornbirds. Well, we watched that every year. <laughs> and then in fifth grade, too, we had a ton, like... I used to be able to, like, I remember having tests on naming countries in Africa. And, yeah. like, we used to, like, I used to know a ton of them. Now, over time, things have changed. A lot of their names change, you know, all these but uprisings, he, rebellions, whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, things, it's funny, man. If you look at, like, a globe or an old world map from just, like, 85. So, not a thousand years ago, but, like, 20% of these countries have different names. Yugoslavia. Right, like not there anymore, right? Czechoslovakia, not there anymore. Right, yeah, East Germany, US, West Germany, right? Right. Uh, I was going to say, you had the USSR. Right. So there's like Czechoslovakia, like all this stuff, those those Baltic states. Right. There was no Kazakhstan or anything like that. They were absorbed into the Austria, USSR. Hungary. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it is, it is kind of wild. And now you're so used to history being history. Like now when you see a new country form, you're like, what is this? It means we're getting old, Ted. That yeah, is what I figured out. Yeah. It's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's always uh, uh, different stuff uh, changing there. Okay. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to the men's room. So-
celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale. With Hot Buys, your choice of color starting at just $3.99. Ashley Sleep mattresses starting at $2.50. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases. And shop top mattress brands like Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic, Purple, and Beautyrest Black with 60-month special financing only at Ashley. Subject to credit approval. No minimum purchase required. Minimum monthly payment, down payment, tax, and delivery may be required. See store for details. Love the flexibility of working in all sorts of places? Well, working on the go seamlessly requires a strong network like T-Mobile. We have America's largest 5G network, so whether you're on a video call at the park or uploading large files at a coffee shop, we have the 5G speed you need. Whatever takes you on the go, T-Mobile's got you covered. Find out more at T-Mobile.com slash network today. Coverage not available in some areas. See 5G device coverage and access details at T-Mobile.com. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Whether you love true crime or comedy, celebrity interviews or news, you call the shots on what's in your podcast queue. And guess what? Now you can call them on your auto insurance too with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. Get your quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. The men's room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. Oh, here we go, Pennsylvania man laughs and celebrates after getting his 12th. DUI. <laughs> Meanwhile, Seattle police have a man who stole forty thousand dollars in Magic the Gathering cards, but they will not name the guy. Thank you. Massachusetts man busted with crack and a rocket launcher in his car. German shepherds jump into a stranger's truck and refuse to move from where they are. And a light rail conductor is attacked with a quote foreign substance. It is time for your headlines. Now it's time to hit the head lines. Here's my car. All right, Tom, sure. we go to Massachusetts, where one man chose a bad spot to chill out. Authorities were called to the parking lot of a local Red Roof Inn on reports of a suspicious car. The officer approached and uh, had a conversation with the driver up until the officer noticed drug paraphernalia in the car. The driver submitted to a search of the vehicle, which did turn up crack cocaine in his possession and an M190 U.S. Army rocket launcher. And you consented. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair to say our boy didn't uh, have the proper licensing for the weapon, and it was seized <laughs> along with the drugs, and he now faces several charges. My first... Where in the hell did you get this thing, I dude? don't know. <laughs> That's probably the more terrifying part. <laughs> right. It's not like, you know, you can just go to some guy in a back alley and just grab one of those bad boys. Or like when you leave the military, it's like, take your gear with it. Right. I, I mean, that's not how it works. I feel like some stuff leaks out. M190 rocket launchers. Nah. And getting... you're on crack, which right. makes me feel even better. Oh, for real, though, dude. <laughs> and you're just sitting in the parking lot of the local hotel, just a smoking crack. Fit. You're dug on rocket launcher. Well, they left that light on. <laughs> oh, is that Motel 6? That's, That's Motel, Motel 6. 6. All right, my bad. <laughs> Do not besmirch the good name of the Red Roof Inn. Motel 6. Oh. <laughs> Red Roof Inn, so that's a motel? Pretty much, yeah. 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 It's just another one of those chains. I know, it's just like... Of course, they're smoking crack with a rocket launcher in front of a motel, in a motel parking lot. Right. Great work. <laughs> Next time, just turn yourself into the cops directly. Yeah, right? right. Make it easy. Damn. In other news, we stay right here in Seattle where a thief has been busted. A local business was relocating operations from a warehouse in the area, and among the goods to be moved was a massive collection of Magic the Gathering cards. But during the move, the warehouse manager noticed that some of the inventory of said cards was ending up among the missing. Yes, at some point, the manager was able to spot cards matching those that were missing on an unknown site for sale and decided to place an order can't be that simple, right? Well, yeah, from there, they were able to track and return uh, the return address to the thief, a temporary employee of the warehouse who decided to make off with upwards of $40,000 worth of cards. Damn. They're now facing charges, and the majority of the cards have been recovered. So Sounds to me like how many cards you need to take to add up to $40,000 worth? The haul that they showed in the picture, if that was $40,000 worth, it's not much, dude. It really? also sounded to me like reading that story that the guy who got his card stolen he was the guy who did the investigative reporting to try to find out where those cards are being sold online. Right. He bought one and ordered one. Right. There was a return address on there. Right. Jesus so it wasn't even like, what are we doing? Jeez. He had, he had, he had, a, he had, a, he had to uh, find them on his own. Yes. It's like driving around your neighborhood looking for your bike. 
No kidding, dude. You know? And honestly, looking at it, I'm, I don't have it right in front of me anymore, but it looked like it was only like 40 or 50 cards. Yeah. Obviously, Jeez. there are bigger fish to fry out there, but still, when someone steals that m- amount of Once you hit value... Right. Right. It's but not I, what it yeah. is, it's how much it's worth. But those right. cards, those gaming and trading cards, they have been expensive for a while. I remember when I was a kid and Pokemon cards, which I'm pretty sure was a kind of an offshoot of that. They they, they realized the success of Magic and they were like, we should do our own trading card game. Mm-hmm. There was one on there. There was this holographic Charizard one. And I remember I was down at the Tacoma Dome and I remember seeing that price tag. And at that time, back in the 90s, that bad boy was like, 500 bucks. Jesus. Like, I know there are certain magic cards that are worth a significant amount of Absolutely. money. Absolutely. But it's a, I, it just blows my mind. Right. They can get nuts. Over to Florida for a rather odd story. A mother shared her animal encounter after she had dropped her daughter off at daycare. She walked her daughter from the car to the facility, leaving her driver's side door open while she was gone. What she returned to was no burglar, but a trio of German shepherds that had jumped into the car and were excitedly waiting to be taken on an adventure. Oh, what's up? Needing to go to work and running low on patience, the woman eventually sought uh, the help of police who were able to coax the dogs out after a short period of time and some fish sticks. Yes. And take fish them to- sticks? Oh, yes. Yeah. They got two out just by tugging on collars, but there was one that was like, I want to go for I'm a car ride. I ain't going nowhere. Sticks. Yeah, fish sticks. Uh, they were oh. able to, to to coax the dogs out and take them to a local shelter until their owner was able to collect them. No word on the owner's like, yeah, what's the deal? Because if you that's a big dog, a right? Very that big can dog. be a little aggressive, and it's they're friendly. And they were was, friendly, but this lady's still like, there's three in my car. They don't right. want to leave. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's not even more to story because it's not like they're random German shepherds. Right. No. And you got three massive dogs. Yeah, what are your three dogs, dogs doing yeah. around here? I got it. Just in we case, let's go for a ride. Just in case, the story left a bad taste in your mouth. Thankfully, there's good news. We head over to the UK, where an item of history has been unearthed. A local township in northern Scotland, by the name of Casbrack, is the center of our story. As they've recently revived an old tradition known as the Cabrack Picnic and Games, as part of the <laughs> Scottish Highland Games. All right. As part of this revival, they also sought to bring back an old trophy, which was awarded to the winner of the Picnic Games. But the last time that they had a winner was back when they put an end to the game, the last year of its operation in 1936. Jeez. They had a record of who the winner was, but they won it in 1936. So they really didn't have any information right. beyond that. Right? They issued a public appeal to get the trophy located. Luckily for them, it came to the attention of the reigning champ's 70-year-old son, who was able to unbox the trophy and drive it to 600 miles to return it. That's cool. That's so, 70 years old. Right. Well, like, oh, uh, just bring it on back. Like, I, I've got it, but you got to come and get it. I've you know? got the trophy. It's in my cellar. I have the trophy. I'll bring it down. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> it's not that unheard of. No. There's a lot of stuff that, like, not the Stanley Cup, but there, there's some other big sporting events where that trophy is not the original one. No, yeah. 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 And, like, it's just some old family or somebody still has it. Exactly. The World of Sports, we got a run of uh, college basketball over on ESPN2 Plus and you, as well as CBS Sports and FS1. NBA basketball is underway on, on uh, TNT with the Mavericks hosting the Suns, and that'll move into the late game with the Warriors hosting the Lakers. And in the world of hockey, your Seattle Kraken oh. defending their turf against the rival Vancouver Canucks over on Root Sports, and the Canucks are on fire right now. This is going to be a hard one. Puck drops at 7 with Joey Decord in the goal, and as far as your weather, things are cooling down and staying dry throughout the, uh, the night into tomorrow, where we can expect clear skies and temperatures in the low 40s. That is it for your headlines. With that, my talk is out. Thank you, sir. We'll see you next time for the weekend. Ted versus the FCC and a bad choice Friday. Kevin Deers is up next. He's got more Pearl Jam tickets. Yes, indeed. It's all true, but in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production. Imagine the relief of securing fair compensation for an accident you were in, where the insurance companies aren't dictating what's good enough and your injuries and suffering are truly acknowledged. Whether it's an auto accident, a workplace injury, or slip and fall, Phillips Law Firm has dedicated over two decades to ensuring their clients receive the rightful compensation and attention they deserve. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today or visit justiceforyou.com. They don't win, you don't pay. Phillips Law Firm, justice for you. At Metro, get an iPhone 12 with 5G and a dual camera system for $99.99. Take amazing pictures and share them instantly. And don't put up with life's yada yada. Yada yada. Like photobombers. Zoom? 
crop out. Yada, yada. And bye. You don't take yada yada in life. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Get iPhone 12 with 5G with no activation fees and not a yada yada. Only at Metro by T Mobile. Switch to Metro, bring your ID. This offer isn't available for customers currently at T Mobile or that have been with Metro in the past 180 days. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. This episode is brought to you by Allianz Travel Insurance. When you're far from home, anything can happen. That's why more than 70 million American travelers trust Allianz Travel Insurance to protect their adventures. With benefits for medical emergencies and evacuations, trip cancellations, travel delays, and baggage mishaps, you can travel with perfect peace of mind. Learn more and get a quote at AllianzTravelInsurance.com.